It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley are here with lots to talk about, including the uh, pop-up on Windows 7 that's going to get all your relatives calling you. A look at Windows 10 19H1 and a new feature that will allow Windows to remove faulty updates without you doing anything at all. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 612, recorded Wednesday, March 13th, 2019. N is for OneNote. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Atlassian. Atlassian Software powers a full spectrum of collaboration between IT teams and the rest of your organization. Visit Atlassian.com slash IT to see what IT can be by giving their products a try for free. And by IT Pro TV. Providing effective training with access to virtual labs and practice tests. Visit go.itpro.tv slash windows to take advantage of their lowest prices of the season. For an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription, use the code WW30 at checkout. Time for Windows Weekly. Oh, wow. I scared myself. The show where we cover <laughs> whoa, the, the latest news from Microsoft with Mary Jo Foley. Uh, her blog is, uh, you know, it's on ZDNet, but it's titled all about Microsoft. So that must mean she knows all <laughs> about Microsoft. <laughs> Everything there's to know. A little too much. Many scoops coming <laughs> from her this week. Also, Paul Thurot, T-H-U-R-R-O, double good dot com. He is, uh, he is, he makes him laugh every time when I say that. So I like to I say I don't know why. That. I don't know why <laughs> either. Because you're not I double enjoy. good. You are double good. I am. You're double I good. Yeah. Uh, like a nice Hershey bar. Not far from Hershey, PA, <laughs> by the way, in the beautiful lower Mukunji Valley. Uh, today, we gather to talk about something called Windows. Remember before Azure, there was this uh, yep. product Microsoft used to sell? Oh, God. We used to talk this about like, it a lot. <laughs> this is like the Silmarillion if you're into the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, it is. This is this other thing. Yeah. It's from a long time ago. Yeah, nobody wants it. Nobody understands nope. it. <laughs> yep. But it's here. It's um, pretty much the focus of our lives, yeah. So uh, there's a the whole passel of Windows news, but I think we should do it in numeric order. So let's start with Windows 7. I know. Okay. We should do that. Any XP news before we start? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. X comes at the end uh, of the alphabet. No, not yet. Not yet. W X Y Z. Windows XP is still unsupported. It's like the Chevy Chase joke about the. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> Generalissimo the, Francisco yes. Franco is still dead. He's still dead. Well, you're <laughs> yeah. dating yourself on that one. That's uh, uh, just not not just on that one. Leo. That's the '70s, baby. That's old. That's old school. Classic. classic. It's classic. It's classic. It's legacy SNL. <laughs> um, well, I hardly know where to start. Let's, uh, I guess, I start with the uh, the end of Windows Seven. Right. <laughs> so this is going to start coming up on your other radio show, Leo. Yes, I know. Uh, You're exactly right. Uh, so in April, Microsoft is going to start um, issuing pop-ups periodically to people still running Windows Seven, saying, "Hey, do you know the end of?" Support of Windows 7 is just around the corner. That's going to be January terrif 2020. Terrify people when they say that. Oh, yeah. And you know what's the worst part? Because I just had this phone call with my mom last week. When she sees a pop up, she knows something is wrong. Right. Like it's, like fake. it's malware. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yep. Yep. So here, this thing's going to pop up on people's screens, and people are either going to be one, terrified or to just ignore it and hit the X in the corner and it's going to keep happening. Does it say okay or cancel? Uh, <laughs> we don't know. That's, we the, seen that's the, the good news. <laughs> <What is it? laughs> no, okay or please no. Well, I mean, what, what are your choices? Well, no, my, Microsoft is going to let people disable it, right? If Which was one of the complaints. Do it. Well, we don't right. know what it looks like. I mean, it may be obvious. I think what Leo was alluding to is the, the nonsense, uh, Behavior that occurred when you clicked on the OK or cancel on the, uh, yeah. the previous oh, trackware. No, no. yeah. Right. We're not going to um, have that as far as we know. But Well, we don't know. I mean, but we don't know. Yeah. I guess they haven't shown a picture of it. Right. No, but I think I think what it's going to look like from people I've talked to is 
if you click on the X, you're going to get it again sometime because you didn't actually opt out of it. But there'll be a box, I believe, that'll say, do, if you don't want to see these anymore, click here. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that will be there. Um, well, yeah, and then the rest like of it, I think, will be... I <laughs> I know. And, but you, you know, know what? Nobody will do that, right? Like no. the people who don't know about this, they're just going to click the X and it's going to come back in a couple months or however often. They say a handful of times. A um, handful of times? What is, yeah, they what wouldn't even say that? that often. What does that mean? A handful. It's between a bushel and a bucket. You wouldn't it's expect like a, these people. These are engineers and they're using terms like a handful? They, I think because they don't want to tell us the whole story right Leo, we don't think it's going to be every month i don't think it's going to be but, every month but i is it going to be every two months is it going to be every I mean, month what, and a half? what are we doing <laughs> about read this you something they from give you today some, okay this is just <laughs> unrelated but this is you're talking about a team you know the team that makes windows and their inability to communicate they're talking about a um uh, the schedule this year for 19 h1 h2 and 20 h1 uh donna sakai writes uh after we get 19 h1 nearly finished <laughs> and ready <laughs> You know, there are engineering terms for that milestone <laughs> that Microsoft refuses to use. Apparently, they were too clear or something. But, but you know, th this is yeah, almost of done. Of course, they're going to screw this up. You know, Nobody I, I, wants to say RTM. <laughs> yeah. So or the, the, which the, Canada my bigger or, concern, and it's the concern your mom will also have, is, okay, okay. what mm -hmm. do you want me to do about it? Exactly. Right. So... Should One I thing download another uh, update to Adobe Flash? Would that fix it? <laughs> well, no, but this is the problem, right? So as we move in, into the latter half of 2019, into 2020, if you're literally running Windows, if you got a computer that came with Windows 7. And you're still running it because you And like you're still it. using it. Yeah. That computer is not a good candidate to upgrade to Windows 10, nor is Microsoft offering a free upgrade anymore, right? So. Right. And I think there's a reason for that. They do have a pretty good idea of what those computers look like out in the wild. And they know that either it's impossible for technical reasons or it just would be a bad experience in many cases. And uh, that really does put people like your mother or who have normal people yeah. in a bit of a bind because I think the way a lot of those type like your mother is probably a really good example is probably not a, a super heavy computer user per se. She no. kind of uses it for whatever tasks every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, presenting her with this uh, idea of you having to spend money now on a new computer, which is basically the solution. Right. I don't think a lot of people are going to be okay with that. You know? I know. So what I think it's going to take you to is this Windows 7 page. I, I have a link to it in my story. And it yeah. says, what can I do to prepare when you click on that? And the first thing it says <laughs> is back up your files and photos. Then it says, check out the latest PC. So they're totally telling what? you, you're going to have to a buy a new PC. PC? Yeah. No, that's this is the only solution. That's what I mean. Uh, there, yeah. we're not at the point anymore where there's some large base of users out there with PCs that even could upgrade to Windows 10, right? So, a lot. Not this is not uh, yeah. businesses we're talking about here, right? Where they may purposely buy a brand new computer what's and then the, back. Wait a minute, what's you the know, video? Back to Windows 7. There's a video. <laughs> what's the video? It's some woman driving a car. She's driving a car. Off a cliff. Oh, with a dramatic. <laughs> End of life. Oh, I get it. She's turning in her oh, Honda. See, it's just like the Honda. Your dog <laughs> is dying. Wait, Remember wait. when regular gas was a thing? That's when oh, Windows 7 was around. They're taking away the sofa. What? What? And your wallet has a, a gift next to it, and inside there's a brand wallet. new wallet. <laughs> oh, jeez. You're going to get rid of the Constanza wallet. Buy a new car, get a new sofa, and hand over your wallet because it's time. All right, so clearly the message here is spending money <laughs> solves all problems. Yeah, and your Windows 7 <laughs> is just worn out like an old piece of wallet. Or it's just going to look at the dog and be like, you're next. Same story, <laughs> new chapter. But wait a minute. If it's the same story, why do I want to spend $2,000 on a new computer? Yeah, well... Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be $2,000. What can I do to prepare? Back right. up your so, files and photos and check out the latest PCs. Can you grab both of your ankles with your hands? I hate you, Microsoft. <laughs> I hate you, know? you. That's terrible. Yeah. I know. Oh, man. Um, but this is where we're at, right? It is. I, I, I think the PC my mom has, which is probably like a five-year-old Toshiba laptop, yeah. 
probably yep. could one run Windows 10. Yeah, couldn't she just buy Windows 10 for 90 bucks and Yeah. Yes. Or or if she has her key, that's the works, right? If you have your product key doesn't can't you still just enter Wait a minute. that? Nobody and has upgrade? nobody has Wait a product you, key. If you yes. had a product key for Windows 7, you could get a free yeah. copy no, no, of Windows I, 10. Is um, that true? No, no. It has to be a retail product key. So you can't take oh. the product oh, right. key up okay. with a laptop. Oh, that's oh, yeah, but if you at some okay. point bought Windows 7. Yeah, you could but who did that? Do that. No, yeah, you're, you right. Know, you're right. Okay. The people who did that have already upgraded. That's that's what I mean. I, yeah. you know, ultimately, what we're left with here now out in the world are... Um, you know, the non-enthusiastic type people, you know, <laughs> they don't care about upgrading to Windows 10. They right. never did. They never free. took advantage of it. Right. They didn't know about it, you know, whatever it is. Yep. But those computers, you know, if you, like I said, if you bought a computer That's true. at Best Buy or whatever that came yep. with Windows 7 on it, I mean, how old is that computer? They're old, you know? Yeah. Some of the people years. in the chat room are saying that they have used their OEM key. And and well, those people in the chat room are dirty liars, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> don't count on it, I guess. Is the, uh, it might work. That's not my understanding, it. but okay, it's yeah. possible. Um, uh, okay. Because I do know yeah. a lot of people who knew about, and most of them called the radio show, the free yeah. upgrade to Windows 10 some years back, and yeah. said, but I don't want to do it. I like Windows 7. Or they did it, and then after a month, rolled it back to Windows 7. Yeah. So those well, are In that case, by the way, you could you could do that again now. Roll that, it would forward. Be, that would work. So yeah, that's some good would. advice, right? If you've ever activated Windows 10 on any machine. Well, can... it was good advice like three years ago. <laughs> but yeah, I, yes, I'm sorry. I guess if you did well, do that. Uh, actually, uh, that was can, my yeah. common advice was, well, try it. And if you don't yeah. like it, you can go back to Windows 7. And But at that point, you have given yourself mm -hmm. an entitlement to Windows 10 forever that's after right. on that. That's machine. right. Mm -hmm. uh, now, mm -hmm. the problem now, of course, is if you have a bad experience now, you don't really have any further recourse. There's no... I mean, I, I, you could install Windows 7 again if you, if you had that software, I suppose, but or some backup or whatever it might be. But, um, you know, the, the support is still coming to an end, right? So when that doesn't work, I guess, at that point, I guess you could think about looking at a, a new computer. Like, I'm a good example, right? On one of my PCs, I'm still running Windows 7. So what's your plan on, for that? Oh, you're actively yeah. seeking to buy a new computer, aren't you? Yeah. So I have I have the Dell Optiplex that Twit gave me maybe mm -hmm. eight years ago. We gave I'm you still a using. Computer? Uh, yeah. No, what's well, up with that, I, Leo? I no, never got you a guys did. You guys gave it to me because I didn't <laughs> no, have a powerful enough. Computer. Oh, you needed it for the Skype. Yeah. Wow. Right. Right. And, but now that was a I'm one time like, only offer. I just want to. It was. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Leo, uh, I don't know if you heard, but support for Windows 7 is ending. I'm, oh, I'm no. curious how, So I was waiting for you guys to like, send you the send new Mac. Another one. <laughs> send, send me the new I'm Mac. I'm send you yeah. an Ubuntu disk. I need an iMac Pro. <laughs> no, send so I'm thinking, what I'm thinking of doing is either getting, uh, just getting a new laptop and a docking station and a monitor and using that. Um, yeah. How about a, Paul, what about a NUC for her? Oh no, she needs. A, yeah. You need to move around, though, right? You want a laptop. Well, if she wants to replace her desktop, a NUC would do it. Um, yeah, with a monitor, right? You already have a monitor, though, right? Well, I have the all-in-one. Oh, PC. it's an all-in-one. Oh, yeah, no, say. it's not a monitor. Yeah, yeah, you need it. You're gonna need a display. Plus, this one, it's. I'm starting to have a lot of trouble with it. Yeah. Like right before the show, like sometimes the keyboard just stops working, and I have to switch. So, which port have the thing you been using, using this for Skype all along? Like you're using this right now. I'm using it right now. Oh my God! I had no idea. Yeah. What um what is what we are got our the, seven years out of that? That's, can we find yeah, out? Yeah, it's the been great. Are? So, if you right click on my computer, if I remember correctly, and go to, is it setting uh, settings or properties, whatever? Yeah, you, you need see to bring up system happened. settings. Actually, uh, you know, I'm thinking we do want to do this again with you, Mary Jo, only because yeah. uh, the advantage of this is you don't do anything else with that computer. Right. So it's it's easy for us to troubleshoot because you ha there's nothing right. You guys there. have remotely troubleshooted it for me several times. I think <laughs> what we're gonna do. I hate to say this, but we might send you a Mac Mini. Just oh, but you don't have a monitor, keyboard, and mouse, do you? No. <laughs> um, so you need one with you need a keyboard, monitor, and mouse too. No, you know what? I'm just gonna buy one. Okay, I'm just gonna buy one. But then Paul's idea though is I'd good, like which is have a dock. That's what I think. Yeah. I so in other words, you need to buy a laptop anyway, so you'll get do. a dock, and then you can use See, it. This is my Lenovo. Uh, they don't. The dock is different now, unfortunately. But this is the yeah. Lenovo dock, which yeah, is, is all all wired in and has yeah. HDMI and everything. And sure. uh, so when I get, you know, when I sit down at my desk with my yeah. laptop, then I just 
plug it in, yeah. and now it's but a I desktop. Think I do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but now you can do a single cable Thunderbolt three type. Yeah, thing. yeah, it's much better now. I, although, yeah. in a way, this I like this because it's no, I like that kind of a, style. It's too, a actually. stand, right? It's really yeah. solid in there. Yeah, um, I'm running Windows Seven Pro Service Pack one on this. It's a God. Dell Optiplex ninety ten. Does it say yeah. Intel Core two Duo something something? Intel what, what is, Core i seven. Oh, okay. um, Center. So I understand now. I, I I forgot that we did that, but yeah, because we yeah. wanted you to have a computer that was not, and we kind of do so, that with a number of hosts. That's just not. There's you don't use it for anything except for talking to Core us. Core i7 dash. What is the first number? Three. Three seven seven O S. So third generation. That's quite a bit. That's like it's old. So this is five or six years. Hey, old. it was free. Um, Knock it off. You know what? It's been great. <clears throat> yeah. not, Did you get this at the no uh, at the local thing. charity organization? No, so what's the? No, um, no, we ordered a new no. one. I'm sure Russell did, did this because he's a big deal. How much RAM is in this thing? How much RAM is in this? Um, four it's gigs. Possible. But we oh, wouldn't want gigs. you to put Windows 10 on it. To be honest with you, we would. I know because we want it to be a stable. No, that's what I was quantity. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm. We'll send you. We can send you a replacement for that. But if you, yeah. you have a Winchester you know hard drive in it, Leo, what's the? <laughs> it does. It's a five <laughs> megabyte <laughs> Winchester. Yeah. Like yeah. A, Careful, guys. When you laugh, but it's been a good machine. <laughs> no, that was the, the bottom. <laughs> that was the whole point. That's why we sent you an Optiplex. It's yep. just. A, it's a tank. It's not something you'd want to use. No. 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 In any other way, you, which we kind of want. I remember. No, when you guys sent it to me, I remember Alex saying to me, so you want the touch version of this, right? And I'm like, touch? No, I don't want the no. touch version of this. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's actually you not a bad system. Uh, I think uh, uh, you could easily put 10 on it, but that would kind of defeat our purpose. You could, I mean, but you'd want to upgrade the RAM at least. And yeah, then who I know. knows? And it's that just it's starting to slow down. Honestly, because of its, because it predates the Spectre meltdown stuff, I, I don't know that they fixed. They probably those didn't. But nobody's that far back. I, Mary Joe's I Skype computer with Spectre. <laughs> right. Come on, guys, oh, come at they me. They will now that they know it's out there. Oh, oh, oh. Um, now I'm fully patched. I'm running all my security yeah. stuff. It's been a good machine. Well, I'll, I'll let me talk to the uh, the team and see what we want no, to do. No, but uh, Leo, seriously, I don't want you to send me one because I need okay. to buy a laptop Okay, this anyway. pushes you into that. Yeah, I'm going to just go And, and we've hop. had pretty good results. Well, Paul hasn't, but but we've had pretty good results <laughs> well, with people using their own system. Bills. I know. That's why we send I'm not people do that. dedicated systems no. because no, we no, don't no, want them to do that. Do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that at all. Yeah, but but yeah. we haven't had to lately. I mean, that was that was then. This is now. Most most people yeah. running uh, their own personal computers are able to because uh, processors are fast enough to Skype and have you know. Right. What we were people were doing is they're putting email on it and they download email in the middle of a show, and it would tie up the computer and it would start <laughs> to go futz around and stuff like that. Yeah. No, no. So we're perfectly willing to send you a, a Skype only computer. I mean, I appreciate that, yeah. but you don't need to. Okay. You seriously don't. And Paul, I'm making you use. <laughs> I'm going to send you uh, Mary Jo's Optiplex. I, you don't right, and let's let him. I, I could build a fort out of the computers in my house. I, don't, <laughs> I know. I really. I, know, I, know. I don't need more forts. I'm more. Uh, <laughs> but but we ended up with either. Steve Gibson. He has a dedicated computer. It's a Mac. Wow. Uh, so he's not tempted to mess around with it. I was um, say he's running XP on it. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Um, the number of our uh, hosts have yep. dedicated uh, Skype systems for that reason, you know. No, I'll I'll be good because I'm not. I've never been yeah. in the Insider program. No, I don't. I'm not a person who should be running these bills. I'm not yeah, qualified. No. I'm a normal. You're a normal. You want wow, to stay? We need normal. more normals, Mary Jo. You know. Do we? I think we do. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of why we send people uh, little Mac minis because we know they won't be yeah. tempted to mess with them. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't want to touch that. That but would no. be like you sending me an Xbox. There's certain things that just can't cross know, the threshold in here. Uh, no, what I about Lenovo, so many goals Paul? This what, year. Are, what about her getting a ThinkPad? I feel like she's a ThinkPad yeah. gal. Yeah, I think a ThinkPad would be a good choice. Yeah. I'm thinking so ThinkPad I, or way, HP. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You, you, yeah, you really need HP's to look nice at the too. Elite Books. Um, yeah. The latest, yeah. the typing experience on that thing is the best I've ever. Really? Ever have seen. Okay. Yeah. I, will. I was just reading a review, um, one of the one of the tech blogs, where the guy's mm -hmm. talking about I think the Dell XPS this keyboard, and he says I have to remind myself that any keyboard is infinitely better than a Mac keyboard, but because <laughs> these Mac laptop keyboards are so awful, he's starting to say yeah. this is the greatest keyboard. Then he remembers actually I should oh, wait. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> it's only it's because I'm comparing it to a Mac yeah. laptop. It's better than the horse and buggy I was driving yeah, before. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. But you like those uh, that HP Elite keyboard, huh? The new one, yeah. The Elite Book. It's the Elite Book 1040, which is the 14 inch version. Ooh, um, that's a nice size. X360. So it it it's um, what do you call it? A convertible PC. Uh, not that I ever use it that way, but the right. yeah, there's just something about the keyboard. It, it's it's perfect. It's really really nice. nice. Very but good. there's a bunch okay. of good choices there. I mean, HP has yeah. other computers as well. Uh, the ThinkPads are all excellent, of course. A um, bunch of good choices. The Huawei, they have, yeah. they have is great fantastic. keyboards. But but I know Mary Jo likes really thin. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Huawei's thin, but you can't buy Huawei. Then they'd be spying spying on your ZDNet. <laughs> this looks yeah. like the Huawei or the MacBook. This looks like it just a yeah. ultrabook. <laughs> thin and it's got all the ports, you know. Three pounds. Yeah, I like yeah. it that it has ports. There's a 13 yeah. inch version. I, I happen to prefer this. It's it's you know a hair bigger, obviously. Um, I probably you can go get a 13, 13 inch version. Yeah. yeah, ultra slim. This looks good for you. Yeah, I wish it I weren't it chrome colored. I like. That's one thing mm -hmm. I like about the uh, Lenovo's. I like the black. Mm. Apparently, I can't. I'm not going to be allowed to buy it. It's just <laughs> it's not going to load. But uh, okay, I was going to look at the prices. I don't need it, but I, uh, you know, thought it'd be nice to have. We're going to send you a System76 uh, Linux laptop, <laughs> yes, and yes. Uh, you can use G-Edit with that, and I think you're going to be very happy. G -Edit. You can use G-Edit to, uh, you know, change the uh, X Windows. Uh, exactly. Mini config, whatever they X call config, it. X -config, config, yeah. It's really a valuable tool for that, because sometimes you'll find mm -hmm. deep within the X Config that there's just... <laughs> Uh, remember those it's days? All about Linux is yeah, already taken, I do. though, isn't it? Uh, those were those days. The best thing about those days is you would make a change to that file, and then you could, it, the computer just wouldn't work. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like then you were just dead in the water. But in their favor, you never got a pop up saying your version of Linux is about to expire. Buy a new computer. <laughs> <That's true>. Right. <laughs> there is that. There is that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well. I don't know. How do so, we yeah. get into this? Oh, because of that pop-up. Okay. okay. Right. So, yeah. yeah, when people call in, just tell them, make sure they look for the checkbox if they don't want to see this pop-up again. Otherwise, it's going to keep popping up. <sighs> yeah. And I just, it really kind of galls a little bit that their advice is buy a new computer. Yeah. Well, um, no, but it's the timing, right? I, I, you know, I know. Remember, this I think is it's two the right versions advice. of Windows ago. Yeah. You know, yeah. when, when was it? Uh, 2009 was when, it was. right? Yep. I think, yeah, it was when Windows yep. 7 shipped, right? So mm -hmm. Windows 8 must have come out then, what is that, 2012? 12. 12. Uh, yep. And so you would have, I mean, you would have had to have purchased, you know, as an individual, Windows not a Windows 7-based computer, uh, 2012 or earlier. Mm -hmm. it's, a long, it, it's a long time ago, you know. It's, it is. Um, no, and if you, and if you tell them, here's, here's how to transfer your files onto another machine that you might have, and then you're going to be running Windows 10. Like, if they have a bad experience because of 10 on that thing, they'll be like, oh, wait, I know. what? I know. You know? <laughs> well, hopefully, if, you know, look, the advice stands on Windows 7 like it does on Windows 10. If you're storing stuff in the cloud, if you're using OneDrive, whatever, honestly, you should be okay. Uh, uh, but then again, yeah. your mother, the very typical users out there in the world, of which there are many, yeah. are probably still putting stuff in their documents folder. They're putting it wherever. They're not really yeah. thinking about cloud. She doesn't use the cloud. No. Yeah. She only so, she uses cloud for email. That's the only thing. It's like she doesn't store yeah. anything in the cloud. I try to I've tried to get her to do that, but no. <laughs> That's just a no. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the I, reason right. she's on seven is she saw Windows ten on my first she saw Windows eight on my machine. Then she saw ten and she's like, I don't want that. That's too hard. Yeah, I can't right. deal with that. And she just was like, Nope. I'd be like, Mom, it'll, you could get used to it. Nope, not to it. <laughs> you know, maybe you could grab some Stardock tool for her and make Windows yeah. 10 look like yeah. Windows 7. That might be... That's a good point. What you What know? is it, though? I mean, Windows 10 pretty much does look like Windows 7, doesn't it? It looks a lot like 7. It does. You know, I, Except but, the start menu. <laughs> yeah, I always tell the story about my friend Chris, who, you know, normal human being, got a new computer when Windows 8 came out and f was freaking out. Yeah, because, that I understand, because 8 was really and, different. Yeah, and I think there's some leftover hangover type stuff from that, because Windows 10 really does look like Windows 8 when you think about it. I mean, once they kind of got rid of the full screen start menu and added back the real start menu, added the start button back, et cetera, you know, it's... It, they're actually very similar visually, you know, the flat UI and so forth. Um, Windows 7 kind of, well, Windows Vista did this too, but the 
you know, those glass transparency effects, uh, arrow and so forth yeah. was kind of the thing. And if you're used to that, and yeah. even if you like it, I guess, um, you know, windows 10 doesn't look anything like it. I mean, everything's in the same place, right? It, it, mm -hmm. it's, it should be a, a reasonable transition, but I, I guess I sort yeah. of understand people not, not quite getting it. Yeah. I mean, you get used to the patterns of how you do your daily work and what you recognize and how you do it, where you store things. And it's like if something, even one thing is different. Some people just are like, yikes, like, I don't know what well, I'm doing now. If the big right? difference is the start menu. That's easily fixable with startup. It is. Yeah. 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 And I don't think unless, unless you accidentally move your mouse over to the lower right hand corner. Yeah. Uh, you're going to notice much else. That's different right the the window the key the win widgets on the windows are the same the the commands to i think most of it's pretty similar. most of it's pretty similar if you could get over the surface level look and feel stuff yeah. it actually is not a horrible transition oh i prefer right? 10 and i think it's very oh, no i do too seven, yeah. i do too i'm just yeah. saying that i i could imagine people who yeah. are stuck on uh, windows so i'm just being comfortable with it especially mm -hmm. people who just kind of don't care about this stuff yeah. right it, yeah, you know, the, the right. notion of why change? Preferring one it's over the other is like whatever. It's change I, you know. for change's sake, from their point of view, and they it yeah. is. and they don't yeah. get it. It's like I'm well, right. Uh, yep. You know, you suddenly you put the steering wheel on the right. I don't. You know, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. So I I am sympathetic, and you're yeah. right. I'm going to be getting the calls. Oh yeah. No, I, I enjoy <laughs> that this is going to fall on you because <laughs> the type of people who read what Mary Jo and I write over yeah, already, they already a long time oh, ago. Yeah, so. they're not. They're not even thinking That's true. about it. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure uh, Steve Gibson will devote 20 minutes to it as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary Jo, because you do have a Windows 7 PC, you'll be able to experience this nag dialogue. I will. I'll get this. Up. I'll get the pop up in April, and I'll take a shot of it and show you yeah. guys what it looks like. <laughs> How exciting! Yeah, very. I mean, I am curious to see what that looks like. Yeah, remember what the XP one looks like? I think I have a link to that in my story. It was very bare bones, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it just said. It was a little box and it said XP end of support is April 8th, 2014. Click here to learn more. And it had a little box and it said, don't show this message again. That's simple. That's what they did for XP. And people still flipped out and yeah. went crazy when this started popping up and were screaming. <laughs> well, yeah, well, because, I, you know, you but know, again, what did, what, it's kind of like bad news and there's no remedy. It's like, okay, don't, right. don't tell so, me the bad news anymore. But it's still... To, to a normal person, if you have an old washing machine or a car or whatever it might be, yes, eventually it's probably going to run itself into the ground and that's when you replace it. But it doesn't arbitrarily announce <laughs> to you that we you can no longer <laughs> use this thing that still works fine. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I, and I think that's yeah. the disconnect that a normal person would have with this, which is completely understandable. Um, It'd be great if the if the link instead of taking you to buy a new PC just took you to an Android page and suggested <laughs> a, a sure. smartphone. How about that I, Samsung I Galaxy S10? Chromebook? Yeah, or a Chromebook. Yeah. I feel like what they need to put instead of end of support is that you're not going to get any more security updates. Something more like clear. Well, that's terrifying too. That's you know. but you want people to be terrified, right? Yeah, <laughs> like. End yeah. of support. I don't care if I'm supported, right? Like, yeah, but whatever. You said and then you said something interesting, Paul, because you, you make an excellent point. If you had a Chromebook, this is a pop up you would, n I can promise, you will never see. Yeah, it. you'd never see it. Yeah, that's true. It's mm -hmm. never going to happen. I think the only Chromebook I'm aware of that went out of support was like the original, the original that Google Pixel prototype did, thing. Yeah. Yeah, whatever that was. Um, but yeah, that's right. I yeah, mean, eventually I, they go out of support, but I don't think that they stop updating. Right, right, right. Right. Anyway, I, that, yeah, sorry, I mean, because Chrome gets updated. Yeah, I, I, right. It's a different system for sure. But um, anyway, this is uh, this is probably th this is kind of a perfect storm of things, right? Uh, right. Windows eight one Windows eight was not widely adopted. Everyone hated it. A lot of people stuck with Windows seven because of that. Um, a lot of people who could take advantage of the Windows ten free upgrade did so. We had the mm -hmm. Spectre meltdown thing, and I, I'm not really positive off the top of my head, but I don't believe that Intel and or Microsoft is busy fixing every single generation of these no, chips. they're I, not. I, yeah. No. Yeah. I, that's my understanding. So uh, Mary Jo's computer is probably very typical in the sense that um, 
It may fall outside of that window, you know, and that's yeah, another thing. Yeah, but to thing. be I mean, fair, we've never seen a Spectre or Meltdown exploit in the wild. I mean, it's right. if you're, if you're yeah, a but, spy, you should worry about that. <laughs> sure. Okay, <laughs> no, okay. But I'm just saying, you know, but um, if there's a report in next February that there are still 500 million Windows 7 PCs out in the world, and oh, by the way, a big chunk of them are these older things that can't upgrade mm -hmm. to Windows 7, that's a nice ripe target right there. Like people who clearly don't yeah. care about anything. And aren't paying attention to anything are excellent targets, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I mean, like I said, I completely get it. I'm super happy. I don't have to deal with these people. Um, <laughs> well, and honestly, honestly those nightmare. are the people it's, I point to at Chromebook. I mean, it, this is not facetious. Yeah, yeah that, no, it's and that's understandable. I mean, that's I what they should be using. You know. Yeah. Sure. If you care, if you really use Windows and you care about it, you already either upgraded or you understand what to do, or you know, this isn't a uh, going to throw you. What year did Apple transition the Mac to Intel processors? Do you remember? Oh, gosh, no. It was ages ago. Um, must be more than 10 years ago now. You think it was more than 10 years ago? Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to think of what the... I mean, like, I don't even know, because I don't know enough about the Mac, but, like, what version of the Mac might have been around when Windows 7 was new? Are we talking, like, Jaguar or something or Tiger or whatever? I mean, was it was... The transition something? began in 2005. 2000, oh, that was a long time ago. Okay, yeah. it was even, however, I mean, it, however... Yes. Um, it finished by 2007. I do remember, and in fact, even today, you'll get pop-ups on Mac OS. Yeah. Uh, there were pop-ups saying, okay, we're not going to support Rosetta, which is the transitional thing anymore. Mm -hmm. And now and we're getting pop-ups. If you have Mojave and run a 32-bit program, you'll get a pop-up saying it's not going to work in the next version. Yep. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's not exactly analogous because they don't say you need to buy a new Mac. Well, it's not like you could buy a 32-bit Mac. Any time in the past oh, many right. years. But there are people it, with 32-bit Macs, but they've kind of grown yeah. accustomed to the idea that they're stuck at Snow Leopard or what an earlier sure. version. And um, and they're not probably going to try to download 64-bit programs. Do you think know. any security companies are going to come to the rescue here and try to sell to Updates? Windows 7 users who have decided to stick with the yeah. system? Well, remember with XP that both Firefox and Chrome continued to update the browsers for a few extra yeah. years. But did somebody ever offer patches? I think maybe. I don't remember. Well, well for businesses, Microsoft offers yeah, yeah. patches, but you have if to you buy them. for it, yeah. Right. And the price yeah. doubles every year until right. it reaches infinity. So exactly. that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> How many years does it take? <laughs> Not long. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, that's you know, I... I th my you know what happens and what will always happen is unless Microsoft actually flips a kill switch, there will be right. probably half of all Windows users will continue yeah. to use X XP and Windows well, Seven. Uh, what is the percentage? Yeah, there'll of Windows be some. 7? There'll certainly be some hundreds of millions of people for yeah. sure. But yeah, as of uh, yeah. October. Microsoft said half of all yeah. business machines were still running yeah. an older version of Windows. And I don't think that's going to change. Yeah, I think out in the world it's flipped to Windows 10, but it's not it's not a big jump like it's 60 yeah. to 40% or something. What has um, changed? It used to be routine to buy a new computer, and people haven't done that in years and yeah. don't want to, and there's no really there's no honestly, so, there's no compelling reason to do so. Yeah, right, and that's the problem. Um well, the compelling reason now is they're just going to stop supporting it, I guess, but you know, in the business world, a lot of those computers that are running Windows 7 are actually newer computers, right? And that there's actually less right. of a, a risk there because they're highly managed anyway and you know, whatever. I mean, I think that yeah. I think that part of the world is going to be fine. They'll go on whatever schedule they go on. But the people we need to be concerned about here are people like your mother, to keep raising mm -hmm. that example. Um, yeah. Because she doesn't care about this stuff. And normal right. people shouldn't. She doesn't yeah. want to buy. You know, it's again, it's like you walk out to your car and it's locked. It's like, sorry, you yeah. got to buy a new car. You know, but you're working fine. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I, it's just, it's a weird... I don't know that it's completely unique, but I think it is. Some, yeah. I think it is pretty unique, you know. I mean, her her machine it's slowing to a crawl. Like the last time I tried to fix something on it for her, I was like, "Oh, this thing is so slow," you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is time for her to get a new PC, and she wants to get another PC because she likes using certain things like her email and all. Like she, I'm sure she would be fine with a Chromebook, you know. But she she wants a device of some type. So. Yeah. And uh, and in order to totally confuse people, Microsoft <laughs> has decided to update DirectX 12 for Windows 7. This is this actually makes less sense than the thing we just talked about. 
Um, apparently, Blizzard had come to it and said, hey, we'd really like to get Direct, DirectX 12, which is uh, Windows 10 only, working on Windows 7. Because, you know, obviously in the gaming world, that'd be a typical example of a market where a lot of people still using Windows 7 computers. Microsoft inexplicably said yes. Uh, they noticed some huge improvement in frame rate and performance. And now they're going to let other uh, game makers do the same thing. Now, Microsoft being Microsoft, of course, what they point out is, you know, actually, on the same hardware, you're still going to see a much better benefit if you're running Windows 10. But <laughs> that's for completely artificial reasons. I mean, they they spent years developing this only for Windows 10 and have only now backported it. So it's not like the full DirectX integration like you get on Windows 10. But that's just something Microsoft did. I mean, they, they could have easily have made this for Windows 7 at the time and just decided not to to spur people to upgrade to windows 10 so goofy but yeah that they jeez <laughs> i don't know you know it's I like mean, it's uh, not, why God, I'm sorry. i was gonna say it's not like the fact that they're bringing the chrome chromium based edge to windows 7 isn't that weird to me because a lot of enterprise customers who have right. extended security updates they're going to be still running that right but That's the exactly direct right. x thing i'm like huh it makes no sense yeah. The, the the Chromium thing makes tons of sense be, for the reason yeah. you said. The, this is a a step on the way to a transition to Windows 10. And so those enterprises that have to stick with Windows 7 yeah. for some reason for the next year or two, whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, will still benefit from going to, to Edgium or whatever we're calling it. Yeah. Um, because that will be one less thing they have to worry about when they make the transition to full Windows 10. So right. in that sense, putting it on Windows 10 makes sense. Uh, Windows 7, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, DirectX... <laughs> What? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. It, it's not even all of DirectX, right? Isn't it parts of DirectX? No. Yeah, it is literally part. Yeah. yeah. It's not the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. The, the whole crazy. thing, I was just like, huh. <laughs> That's like one of those things you're like, why? We have reached Do you the think point. it has to. Uh, I had a crazy theory about, you know, when mm -hmm. they talked about at uh, MWC open stores in the game world, does this have anything oh. to do with that? <laughs> open. They said open APIs uh, and open. Uh, open stores, right? It, but they didn't explain what any of this meant. They just said, yeah, we're going to yeah. be open. I, I don't think so. Um, I don't have this in the notes, but there is a story. I, I just don't know enough about it yet. But apparently Microsoft has released the final version of an app for the Xbox One that will let you stream your Windows 10 PC to your console. The idea is that you'll stream a game right. and then you can use your Xbox's um, controller to play the game. And okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. One of the things they specifically said about it was that this will work with Steam games, right? And right. this isn't the same thing as an open store policy per se, yeah. but it, it the fact that this was explicitly mentioned tells me not so much that we're going to see Steam on Xbox, but here's a way you can play Steam games on Xbox. You know, kind of a it's sort of open, right? It's it's sort it sort of yeah. falls more into that category. This is literally just for games. I mean, yeah, the the game Warcraft, whatever the Warcraft game is. You may, I don't know if it's available via Steam, but if assuming it is, yeah, you could acquire it from Steam, let's say, and now it works with DirectX. I don't know what the point, I have no <laughs> idea what the point of this is. I really don't. Yeah, it was a weird one. <laughs> it's goofy. Yeah. Two years ago or whenever the DirectX 12 came out, you know, maybe today it's like, why? It, this thing is literally going to expire in 10 months. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. Mm hmm. I assume they did the minimum. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'd like to do now? What? <laughs> Reinstall Windows XP. No, I would like to, <laughs> I would like to take a break okay. and then we'll come back and talk Windows 10. Look how we've We've advanced yeah. through the years. Skip right over 8 1, just like the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah, like the rest of the world. <laughs> Somebody in the chat room said, I've been working in this business for years. I have never, I don't see computers with Windows 8 on them ever. And it's true. No. I, you don't. Isn't it like 5% share or something smaller, even? It's kind of embarrassing. Eight, eight and eight one. Really? It's something small, yeah. That they would, yeah. you know, a product with <laughs> nobody adopted it. it uh, even Windows Vista was. More not popular. as you know yeah, yeah. or me I, I mean you can go i mean you yeah. know yeah yeah no there was no but nothing more loathed than windows 8 yeah, yeah. and it's quite and, an accomplishment uh, yeah. given the history of windows you know yeah it's, it's pretty good dark noted, days. two of the two of the stinkers pretty good <laughs> <laughs> and whatever happened to steven sanofsky he's actually pretty active on the twitter 
He is. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing for a dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's only dead to Redmond. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you are uh, listening to this show, any of our shows, clearly you enjoy uh, geeking out. And then I have to wonder, then why are you in your dead-end job that you hate so much? Now, maybe you love your job, but I bet if you love your job, you're probably in IT. You're thinking, no, Leo, I get to play with all the great tools and toys. I get to learn. I get to grow. But if you're not in a job that you love and you're learning and you're growing and you'd like to make great money and start a career in IT, you got to go to IT Pro TV. These guys really have nailed how to, how, the best way to get skills, to get the certs, to pass the test, to get the certs, to get the job, and then to keep the job once you got the job in IT. And man, there are great jobs out there. Great money, too. Like, I want you to check out IT Pro TV. If you like what you see and hear on Twit, you will love IT Pro TV. They do it very similarly. They have great trainers who are experts in the field. They stream live Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. They have five studios now. So they're always creating great shows. They get them from the live studio to the, uh, the, the on-demand portion within 24 hours. So they have always have up-to-date content. They're one of CompTIA's official video training partners. I think they are the video official video training partner. That means... If you're going for the A plus cert, which is very popular, Network Plus, Security Plus, uh, CompTIA has 12 on-demand courses in those fields. And when I say courses, I mean that's more than one video. It's many videos. But by the time you've gone through the course, you know their, your stuff. And it's not just cramming for a test either, by the way. You really know your stuff. I know you love this stuff. Why not make it a career, a great paying career in IT? Uh, experienced IT professionals deliver comprehensive training at the click of your mouse you could watch on your big screen tv they have a roku app an apple tv app um, fire tv you uh, ios and android apps plus chromecast of course you can watch on the web you could listen in your car you could drive to work watch on your screen get back home put up your feet get dinner watch on the big screen and because it's fun and engaging binge worthy content by the time you're done you just absorb all this great information and it is more, so much more affordable than the other methods. If you've ever priced out a technical school to get an IT cert, tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, even just buying the study materials costs you hundreds and hundreds of bucks. I've got such a good deal for you. Standard membership at IT Pro TV is just $28.50 a month. If you want the premium membership, which includes labs, you get uh, an HTML5 based. Windows server, Windows units, you can do these all in a browser. You don't even have to have a Windows machine to you know, set up a Windows network and configure it and all that stuff. They also have uh, uh, all the videos, and they also have practice tests. All of that's $42 a month, but wait, there's more. <laughs> They're still honoring their special offer, and I hope they keep doing this, because, but, but I can't promise they will, so this is the time to take advantage of it. 30% off, because you're listening to Windows Weekly, uh, and not just for the first month or year, but for the lifetime of your active subscription. So that means standard membership is less than 20 bucks a month uh, or $200 a year. I, I just, uh, I, why wouldn't you do this? If you're at all interested in IT, why wouldn't you consider this? Uh, the premium membership, twenty nine fifty a month, less than $300 a year. Boom, you pay for 300 bucks. That's what your study materials would cost you. And you've got a life, a, a year of learning and a lifetime at 30% off as long as you stay active. I think this is great. Any, Just go and look, uh, go to the website and look at all the different courses. You want to learn Wireshark. You want to learn security. You want to get that certified ethical hacker cert. Visit go.itpro.tv slash windows. Don't forget the offer code dubdub 30 WW30, that's the 30% off our code. You need to keep that. Get started with your standard or premium membership today. They also have team memberships if you have an IT department and you want to keep them up to date. And a lot of big, well-known IT departments are doing this. This is a great thing, too. You could go there, get a demo of the team portal and all that. It's like they call it the pro portal. It's go.itpro.tv slash windows. They offer code WW30. Uh, I just think this is such a great deal. And I, and I really want to support you in, in following your dream. So go to IT Pro TV. Flexible training, binge-worthy content, life-changing results. 
Visit go.itpro.tv slash windows. Offer codes WW30. Now, I, I take that back because Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley actually have jobs they love. So <laughs> you don't have to get into IT. But I know a lot of people who wish they were, uh, they were doing something more fulfilling. Um, Windows 10, H1, 9, 19H1. The app mirroring is hearing. Here. <laughs> here, here. It's here, here. Here, here. Well, it's sort of here. Remember we saw this? <laughs> we saw this in the fall uh, when we were oh, at the boy. Surface event in New York. They showed really briefly um, the ability to mirror an app. It was Snapchat, I believe, on an Android phone onto your Windows 10 PC and then interact with it on the PC. And so they showed that and they never said when that would show up, when people would get to test it, nothing. And then this week... Microsoft released a new version of their Your Phone application. And if you're one of the people who has a very specific configuration, you need to have a certain Samsung phone running Android 7 or above, and you have to have a Surface Go. Um, I have both. I have both. You, and are you running 19H1 on no. it? No. No. Of course not. You have to have all those things in a row. Is it like too ducks. late for me to sign up? <laughs> No, you, I, I could you it. could. Just get into the Insider program? Yep. 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 Is that a skip then, ahead or anything? That's just normal? Just no, normal, normal 19H1. Okay. Yep. Normal fast ring. Yeah. I mean, so the Surface Go must have this. Bluetooth radio supports low energy peripheral yeah. role. Bluetooth LE. Yep. yep. Okay. And if you have all of those things, you can test this, supposedly. I don't know anyone who has that combination of things who's talked mm -hmm. about what it looks like or how it works. <laughs> Yep. You, Paul? Mm -mm. Shoot, I wish I'd known. No. I would have set it up. Yeah. Darn um, it. Yeah, because I, I actually bought that Go. I'm curious about it. I, I have it, the it new seems... Samsung S10, too. I presume that's right. included in the list. Yeah, S10 yeah. is yeah. on the list. Yeah, it's nine, nine plus, 10 plus. Yeah. Um, right, so who is this for? This is the way Microsoft talks about this feature. They say it's for people who might not want to pull their phone out to do something on it. Instead, you could just mirror the app onto your PC and just sit there at your desktop and mm -hmm. or your laptop and interact using your keyboard and mouse with your Android app instead of having to pull your phone out and then interrupt your workflow and work on your uh, phone. I think that's kind of cool. I guess you could, you could post to Instagram, which is kind of yeah. hard to do from Windows. Yep. What else? <laughs> Yeah. Check in a beer well, on untapped from your what desk. What I'd rather do is run Android apps on my Windows PC. For example, right. the and tablet version of you my, you know, Outlook <laughs> Mobile would be nice. Yeah, you can't do that with this. That's not I what mean. that is. It looks like from no. the screenshots, unfortunately, it mirrors the phone in that portrait mode. I mean, it looks like a f emulator. It's the phone. It's like it's literally the mirroring the entire phone. Yeah. 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 It's still kind of cool. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I'll try it's it tonight. a bad idea. You know, it's part of their whole your phone strategy where they're trying to make it so things that you would typically do on your phone are things you could mm -hmm. do on your PC, like messaging so, and looking at your last 10 photos or however many photos. That, that it's an app kind of makes it okay, but I find it strange yeah. after a couple of builds with no new features, right at the end game here, they've released a new build of the next version of Windows 10 that has this feature in it. Like, and of course, yeah. they're only for certain people. So there's going to be more builds and more iterations uh, mm -hmm. where it becomes broader. Now, it's an app, so it can be updated outside of the OS, of course. Right. So maybe the infrastructure work has been done. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. It's I, I, mostly I for messaging, I would guess, right? It yeah. works on messaging already if you have 1809, right? Works. Uh, no, he means messaging apps that not not the messaging oh, apps, the Android but messaging apps, apps right? Yeah, Third yeah. party messaging Some of them, apps. A lot of them have desktop versions, but a lot of yeah. them don't. Right. Yeah. 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 I wish Maybe. they'd do this with iPhone. Zen, because that's a real I, problem. Apple Messages only works. True. Yeah. Well, of course, you're going to be able to run those things natively on the Mac pretty soon. Well, you can run messages on. What do you mean natively? Well, like, I mean, uh, any iOS app. You know, that's, that's oh, yeah, going to yeah, happen, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. I mean, that. so yeah. you'll have that. That's yeah. better than mirroring a device. Mm. But well, there's a theory, Joe. Right? I'm not sorry? a theory about this. You do? Remember what is a couple it? builds ago, they introduced this uh, notion that we wanted people to test playing a game 
mm-hmm. we're not going to tell you what you're testing, right? Yep. So there's right. something in Windows 10, 19H1 that they're not really talking about. Mm-hmm. And we want to see what that is. I'm wondering if that isn't related to the thing that makes mirroring work, that there might be some mm-hmm. kind of a... Because Microsoft is doing, like I said, there's an app now for the Xbox One that will mirror your a right. game you're playing yeah. on your PC. Huh. I wonder if this isn't like a thing that, you know, like mm-hmm. an underlying engine. Because if you think about like yep. game streaming, which we'll talk about later because there's a bunch of Xbox stuff. Um, game streaming is the hardest thing to stream, right? <laughs> like a game. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things, I think it was on live, that company, one of the things that they found was that they could stream desktops really easily because mm-hmm. you know, they've already figured out the hard part. You know, they can yeah. do games. It requires, you know, high frame rates and so forth. Um, streaming things that don't require that is actually a lot easier. And I wonder if these things aren't all interrelated, that this has something to do with streaming back and forth between Windows 10 and other, and other devices in two directions. You know what? The more you're talking about this, Project Rome. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Project Rome is that framework that is the cross device people centric experience that can go mm-hmm. on your devices and it enables you with the pickup you left off stuff. So that could be, they could be doing yeah. something with Project Rome. Interrelated. Yeah. Right. It's curious. It's, yep. it's funny how cagey they're being about it, you know, and yeah. these things might not be related at you all. No, and they might be trying to save that for build, right? Because Project Rome yeah. is the kind of thing they would talk up at build a lot, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Is Project Rome uh, generally available in some version? Is like the the SDK a, is version 1.0 for yeah. um, iOS and Android. Just okay. that just happened in January, I think. Oh, so, yeah. interesting. Is that Rome okay. as in R O M E, the city, or Rome yes. as in roaming yeah. around? R O M E. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Yep. You you could be that's right. That could just be. Just a thought. I, mean, I just that's, that's what went through my. I like head. your thinking on that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Oh my god! We, I, all of my theories are wrong, to, just to be clear. But that, that's <laughs> sort of where my head was at. It makes too much sense, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, Intel just hired Chris Perillo. They did. <laughs> now, now that's not a shot. nice reaction. Although it's come on, to do what? They did. <laughs> For what? Uh, <laughs> he's. I guess he's kind of going where Ryan Shratt and Alan Malventano ended up. Intel uh-huh. Graphics Chief Community Advocate. Well, well, okay. he's a community guy. Yeah, he's, he's all about community, community, right? Hashtag no, I, I am Intel. He's, he's a nut. He he's a, yeah. he knows he's a nut. He likes being yeah, a nut. Yeah, he's a locker gnome. Yeah. 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 I must have locked guys like that in their in their lockers in they, high school. That was that's why they call him the locker gnome, because he would always yeah. get locked in his locker. I'll never forget the day on the screensavers when we put him in our uh, our refrigerator. The old screensavers had a little had a small okay. it wasn't even a big refrigerator. Small refrigerator. Sure. We put him in in there. And uh, he popped out, scared the hell out of me. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to distract. No, no, no. <laughs> it's related, you know, when till. I just found out, so, you know. Mm. Yeah. No. Between Apple and and, uh, and Intel, <laughs> all the podcasters all the and people. bloggers yep. are going, yeah. <laughs> Not all of them, Leo. We're stuck here with you, so <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. I could talk to the people at Apple. They love me. <laughs> uh, I bet they love you more than they love me. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're in among the unloved, all three of us here. Yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah, because I, I, I actually, I, I should have done that a while ago. I don't really use a Surface Go that much. It'd be a perfect mm-hmm. machine sure. to put on the fast ring. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then I can uh, play with this. Because I, I mean, I, and I love this uh, Galaxy S10 is... Really sweet. It'll be a good test of um, whether ske- screen mirroring is kind of process intensive. Because right. um, that's a, such a slow machine. That's yeah, what it probably will work okay, I bet. If that's the one yeah. machine they're beta-ing it on, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. must work okay. I would think so. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, also, the watermark is gone. That's a sign, right? When that happens, yeah, it's like when the crow crows twice or whatever at midnight. <laughs> midnight. When it flies uh, backwards, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> it is. You a can't sign. say RTM as we know, so we just keep saying it anyway. But they're getting well. It's it's a, the, look removing the watermark. They'll they try to pretend it means nothing, but it it, right. it indicates that they're at a certain point on down the path. It doesn't mean things aren't going to change, you know. But right, there's a watermark on this thing. All you know, ninety. Three percent of the way through the testing process, and then it disappears, and it just disappeared. So, 
take that as you which, will. It makes sense. It's called 1903, which means it RTMs in March right. in 2019, right? right? Wow. Third month of the year. Wow. It's the canary in the coal mine. <laughs> or something. Aren't we all? <laughs> yes, we, we are. <laughs> um, here's a new feature many mm -hmm. might enjoy, the ability to defer updates in the home edition. I know. Yeah. Can that be? So we'll see, right? We just we were just alerted to this because somebody on Reddit discovered that if you clean install the very latest build in 19H1, which is kind of an unusual thing to do, but if you do do it, you'll see that the seven-day defer schedule has changed to a 35-day schedule, which puts it on par with Windows 10 Home uh, Pro. Sorry, um, That is what we've been asking for for a long time, you know, um, for, for, for all of windows 10s history to date, a windows 10 user home user does not have the ability to defer updates in any meaningful way whatsoever. Um, there are workarounds and things like that, but the, there's right. nothing in the UI that helps them do that. Mary Jo has used the term Guinea pig correctly to, uh, describe the relationship that those people have with Microsoft. They're Guinea pigs. You know, they don't have any way to not get the next update. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, if this happens, it's a big deal. We had seen in the beta previously that they added a seven day deferral uh, to Windows 10 Home, which is a very tiny thing, but it's better than zero days, right? Um, 35 days, I think we would mm -hmm. almost be at the point where we could say they finally fixed this problem. And so, you I, know, I, you know, what's, you know, what's really interesting. I'm looking at the, so the guy on Reddit, um, he posted, uh, uh, like a little interactive thing where he's showing you how he did it, right? So the pause for seven days is still there on his screen. Oh, but no, then no, that's, but that's the, that's how it works in Windows 10 Pro. So what they've done is right. they, they have a quick link right on the front page of Windows Update. That's seven yeah. days. But you can actually oh, go into the advanced settings and say, I want it to be longer than that. Oh, you can. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that was like, let me, I'd have to look at it to see. So in 19H1, yeah. they added a there's always been three options right there below check for update. Uh, change active hours, view update history, and advanced options. What yeah. they added in 19H1, because I'm on Pro here and I see it too, pause yeah. updates for seven days. It's just like a quick link. But mm -hmm. if you go to advanced options, you can actually pause updates. Oh, it's funny. They changed the UI for this, but it's it, it goes out. I can change it. Actually, that's interesting. Am I running home? <laughs> Maybe I'm running home. Hold on. Right. You click under select. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Uh, let me look at the. Maybe I'm running home. If you're running home and you didn't no, clean install, you won't see no, it. No, because right? I, yeah, I, no, I'm not seeing the, um, uh, the way to change it to more uh, further out. So let me. What if you click on advanced options and then yeah, that's what is I'm there a select yeah, yeah. date? Yeah. No, they have pause updates, but actually it only goes out to March 20th, which is seven days from now. Oh. So here's, all right, here's my guess. I I, um, I think this is related to the fact that this is a beta over beta install. And I, mm -hmm. because this is not how Windows 10 Pro works today, right? So yeah. typically when you go into advanced uh, options, you have the, the full range of whatever the uh, deferrals are. You can defer feature updates, right? You can skip a feature mm -hmm. update or whatever. Um, none of that is here right now, and I think it might be tied to what this guy was seeing on Reddit because this UI is probably identical to what he's seeing at home, and it has never been that way in the past. Yeah. So I wonder if I were to, I'm not going to do this, but if I were to reset this computer mm -hmm. and do a clean install, essentially, I bet I would see mm -hmm. the correct options here, and it would be 35 yeah. days. Yeah. Hmm. So if it, if it does go, if it goes for home users to 35 days, that means everybody gets 35 days, right? Pro yeah, home. That's great. I mean, that's, I'm not, it's, you know, enterprise I, any, gets I, more, don't they? Yeah. Well, enterprise, you can defer you can do what right, you want. But based on right. whatever your, um, yeah. uh, your licensing agreements with Microsoft, if you're in long-term servicing branch, whatever. I think this would be really good if they did this. And you know what? Most home users or many home users wouldn't even know about this and would never do it. Right. Like, well, I don't they know. just wouldn't even know. <laughs> I know a lot, uh, well, yeah, a lot I, mean, of I think uh, it depends, it. right? <laughs> yeah. I think um, normal users, normal users wouldn't know. Yeah, I, I feel our like our readers would know, but you know. I think these updates are like um, it's like when you go shopping online at some new place. Like I went, I bought something from West Elm, and West Elm is a a store that's part of a store consortium. So there are other stores, yep. like I think it's Wolf Sonoma and stuff like that. I started mm -hmm. getting email from every single one of these stores, right? Like five or six of them <laughs> yep. because I bought something online. Right. And so eventually yeah. you reach the point where you're like, oh, screw this. Like, and you go through and you manually unsubscribe to all of them. 
I think Windows updates are like that. You know, this thing interrupts you a couple of times. You're like, okay, whatever. And then eventually you're like, you know what? No. Right. How do I fix this? <laughs> you know, and really, I think surprisingly, it's actually more yeah. the case that uh, normal users don't want updates. Right. Yeah. And would pause yeah. them. In fact, that's but probably just, why Microsoft really didn't allow this earlier, right? In, in Windows mm. Home. Uh, geez, yeah, right? that's a good question. I, I, I actually, mm. I, I think Mary Jo in her guinea pig comment is correct. I really think that they needed a broad range of users to test yeah. the yeah. system. I, I, I really do think that's what they were doing in the beginning. Um, and I think it, I, you know, again, I don't mean, I'm not harping on the, the insider program per se, but the, I, I think there is a, you're, you're, you're tilting the scale by default. The type of person mm. who would join this program, a lot of them are going to tend to have Windows 10 Pro anyway, not home. They're not typical users. They're, yeah, you know, sure. I think they needed a, a more representative view of the world. And I think that had mm. something to do with it. I can't believe they kept it for this long. I can't believe they ever did it, but No, you know um, what? I bet I bet they've got telemetry showing how few people will turn this feature on. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't And so matter. they feel and okay they get, about it. They're like, you know what? Let's throw them a bone and let's let the people who sure. understand this pause updates. And Shut everybody else will jerks keep being weekly and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yep. Right? Yeah, I mean that, that might might be. be the case too. But you're talking like but you're making sense. I mean like they I they know. have confronted by this behavior anyone normal would say this is not the right way to do this and they've it's what it with three and a half years into this thing you know almost also four, an really. incentive to make people pay more money to upgrade to pro and enterprise there's no uh, yes but I, I mean but for individuals i don't feel like there is ever been a real push to get people never, from home to pro. Right. They've never actively said, hey, if you don't, don't like so. this, no pausing thing. Hey, did you know you could get Hyper-V with, uh, you know, Windows 10 Pro? <laughs> like, I, I just don't. You want um, Hyper-V, don't, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Anyway, it's still in, like, A-B testing or whatever. Like, it's not for sure this will be in 19H1, this 35-day thing. Well, I, now I'm concerned. I never even thought. I just looked at the interface in Pro, and it's all screwed up. This is not what it should look like. Oh, really? It's hmm. like this thing has devolved to home. <laughs> So oh, now yeah. I'm now I'm a little concerned. I'm going to look at it on other computers, and maybe I will reset one of them because it shouldn't be like that. That's not how Windows 10 Pro behaves oh. or has behaved to, to date. Um, so I don't know what's going on there. Thanks, Mary Jo. <laughs> Just giving you something else to do besides play <laughs> Call of Duty all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cold. Cold. Yeah, it was warranted, but cold. <sighs> <laughs> oh. 800 million. That's a nice round number. We were talking earlier about how many people are still using XP and 7, but actually, what, what was it about January when Windows 10 finally became more than half of the installed base? I mean, there's, yeah, there's your number right there. If there are 15, uh, 1.5 billion Windows yeah. users, essentially, right. or active devices, 800 of them, 800 million are now Windows 10, so over half. But it's still, you know, again, it's not 75%, 25%. Uh, the other... 40 whatever percent, uh, um, whatever it is, is Windows 7. So it's still pretty close. Yeah. You know, the way they dropped that number was really strange, too. Mm -hmm. um, was it as strange Medi as the way they told us they weren't going to hit the 1 billion figure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of not not quite that strange. But um, <laughs> Yusuf Mehdi just tweeted out one, one yeah. afternoon, hey, we just hit 800 million. Here's a link. And... Like there was no PR wow. around it or anything. It was like, yeah, we're at 800 million. So here's my theory on that one. Um, we know yeah. that Terry was kind of um, cooking the books a bit on the number, right? So uh, a yeah. lot of the earlier milestones when they hit whatever the numbers were, you know, five, 600 million, whatever, were, yeah. it, were inflated, right? Because they yeah. were including virtual machines in that number. And virtual machines are not active devices, obviously. Right, right. Um, and so at some point last year, there was a, there was a, a pause, if you will, between say April and you know roughly Ignite time frame, where they never updated that number again, you know, yep. and then finally last fall they updated it. I think it was last fall, this is probably seven hundred at some point, maybe right around yep. Ignite. Yep. And now we've hit eight hundred. So, I, the good news here, I guess, is now we know the number's accurate. Right? Um, yep. Somebody who can handle math is apparently running the numbers now, um, <laughs> and so that's good. And then. You can also just look at that user base. We just talked about this. 1.5 billion. 
Um, no, every one of those people is not going to upgrade to Windows 10, but some big chunk of them will. And this suggests that sometime in the next year, they probably are going to hit that 1 billion figure uh, finally. Mm-hmm. Right? So, the, yep. you know, look at, that's a, whatever, 800 billion, a billion. I mean, these are big numbers. It's still there. a very yeah. broadly used system. Yeah, it's funny. Once I, I tweeted out about the 800 million, a lot of enterprise users started tweeting back to me, well, I'm going to be adding 10,000 desktops to that pretty soon. <laughs> yep. Um, so, you know, yep. because of the end of life of Windows 7. So a lot of people all at once are going to drop yeah, some big they, right. upgrade and numbers I, I onto think, that you know, number. If you add the normal, what's the opposite of attrition, <laughs> the normal yeah. upgrade rate or whatever uh, to yeah. the little bump they're probably going to get, Mm-hmm. From the Windows 7 upgrade cycles, I, you know, it will probably happen a little more quickly because of that, right? So it's going to happen anyway. It's it, the the billion thing is a guarantee, but yeah. it will probably happen more quickly now because of this forced end of life thing with Windows 7. Yeah, or <laughs> it'll be a big jump in the use of Chromebooks. <laughs> Well, so it's funny you say that because I wrote a, an article about that a couple of months ago where I said, you know, everyone's talking about this big upgrade push thing, but th- I don't see why this isn't as big of an opportunity for Chrome OS, yeah. frankly. Yeah. And mm. those machines are simpler and less expensive typically um, for the type of people, again, we were just talking about Mary Jo's mother, et cetera. They're, they're not advanced users. They only do a couple of things. They only use it occasionally. I mean, a Chromebook would be kind of ideal for the, that kind of user for mm. sure. Um, the other thing, the other half of it, and, uh, you know, this doesn't impact the broader world, but Microsoft is really not pushing a Windows 7 to Windows 10 upgrade. They're they're pushing a Microsoft yeah. 365 upgrade, right? They want you to, right. you as the enterprise, to subscribe to a much broader range of services than just OS support. And um, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. if do you, do you ever get any indication of pushback to that idea? I mean, is there still... You know, I don't. I don't hear from a lot of IT pros who say, "Hey, we just moved to Microsoft 365." I mean, there's yeah. there are definitely case studies and indications. There are big companies who are doing it. You know, a lot of the people who they right. highlight as partners now are doing this. But average IT shops, like I, I, I think that's quite a ways off, if ever, that that starts right. happening. So they're more fo- more focused than on straight upgrade to to tech. Yeah. 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 Seems like, look, I, an OS upgrade is complex enough, right? Can you imagine? Right. Right? It's like just dealing with all of that although, other stuff. Although, you know, a lot of um, a lot of businesses, when they do an upgrade, they want to upgrade everything at once. The hardware, the OS, yep. and yeah, the yeah, office. And, and office, right? Yeah. <laughs> they want to do it all one time, touch the dust once, yeah, and like true. just do everything at once. So maybe, maybe it'll take off more. I'll tell you what's going to screw up these people more than anything are those new office icons, you know? <laughs> If you think Windows looks different or doesn't look different, those new Office icons look nothing like Office icons. They just are like a blob of color it. with a letter, aren't they? Oh, wow. They look like Mac icons. Like they're so, they they're really? just so out of place. Like I'm looking at, I've got um, <laughs> the new Word icon in my taskbar next to the old OneNote icon for some reason. Yeah. And it just doesn't look, the OneNote icon looks like the other icons in my taskbar. Mm-hmm. The the Word icon looks like something, it looks like, I, I, it looks like something fake. Like I, you know, <laughs> photoshopped. You'll it onto get the used task, to it. It's like fluent. I guess. I mean, once no, you I think see they're it, cool looking. can't unsee no, they're it. Not, yeah, yeah, I know. But, but as they've upgraded these, uh, the look of the icon over the years, right? Every several years, they they change it a little bit. It's always been of a you know a family of, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they look, they, mm-hmm. they it always look looks like same. an office. Like yeah, these yeah. look like nothing. <laughs> like I don't know what this is. This they're looks very like colorful. like the Windows right. Light stuff. You know, it's very abstract, yeah. flat. Yeah. Well, flat with um, it has the sense of like layers of graphics, mm-hmm. like uh, yeah. What am I trying to say? Just layers, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's a little more vibrant and three D, perhaps. Yeah, like see how the letters like WXP <laughs> there they 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 look like they're floating above the grid yeah. that yeah. they're in front of a little <clears throat> bit. <laughs> is the theory? Maybe the theory is. I mean, I, I would say now that we are kind of in the post skeuomorphic era of computing where you no longer have to simulate yeah. a physical thing. A folder yep. doesn't have to look like a folder. A document doesn't have to look like a piece of paper. That maybe the what you're going for is quick recognizability. And I'm sure they've tested these. Well. <laughs> but at a, you know, at a glance, oh, that's Word. 
At a glance, oh, that's Excel. I, I at a glance, I look at that thing and I think it's not Word. I think that's the problem. I've been using well, you're Word used to twenty it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. plus mm -hmm. years, right? So the other goofy thing is because it's Microsoft. Um, you'll, you can, as you can see, there are eight icons there. Um, there are approximately four other apps or, or more, depending on which version of Office you get. Mm -hmm. uh, that the the icons have not been updated, right? So if you scroll through like your Start menu, well, even or whatever Skype you see, isn't that updated. It looks like the no. old Skype one. Actually, that's there is no Skype one. That's a um, <laughs> that's that's SharePoint. Okay, herein no, is it? herein Wait, lies no, the problem. No, the, the, <laughs> Skype is on the bottom row. Yeah, the bottom the right. right. The left, bottom left is uh, SharePoint. Oh, I'm sorry. It was sorry, sorry, sorry. I, so we I have ten. I'm showing I had something covering. That yeah, yeah, yeah. I have something different than probably what you're looking at. Somebody in the yep. chat room gave yep. me this very nice transparent yep. ping okay. of ten icons. <laughs> and I'm, let me just yep. see if I can do this test. It's like an eye test at a doctor's. Uh, <laughs> I'll cover yep. my uh, I'll cover my left eye. Okay. Uh, w is okay. Word, Excel, PowerPoint. No, no, what? No, what? No, what? What? No, no, one note. One it's note, an yep. N. It should be okay. Uh, o well, is o Outlook. Is for Outlook. O is for o Outlook. Is for so Outlook. N. Yeah. No one. It's like that SharePoint. book you get when you're a kid, you know, P is for penguin. Share <laughs> it's, uh, SharePoint. What is the cloud? I don't know what the cloud is. Is that OneDrive? One I guess drive. O is also taken. Y, yep. Yo Mama, T, yep. testing, <laughs> S, Skype. Yammer and Teams. Jeez. Yep. Where's Access and Project, guys? Come on. Project, uh, <clears throat> Access Project Publisher. Uh, let's see if I can okay. find it. You know what, here. Microsoft? This scheme isn't working because <laughs> yeah, it's not, well, it's no, but it's so it's the initial classic. letter isn't unique. It's classic Microsoft. By the way, you I know, just lost just my so, driver's license. Classic. Thanks. <laughs> what? He has no depth perception. DMV he sent me a note week. saying, "If you can't read these icons, <laughs> you're taking oh, Uber, buddy." Nice, nice. Hmm. Yeah, but can you point your fingers? So, okay, now I see the problem. Because <laughs> No, I can't do that. No. The problem is that the icon background no longer really looks like anything. I mean, I see Yammer now. If I understand yes. that's Yammer, yes. it's like voices. Well, but it no, could just okay, be no, no, it's big. Look at the, the word thing. There are lines. It's meant to represent text. No, I understand. The Excel thing is a bit of a grid. But not at a glance. You have to really think about it. One note, what? Purple? It could be my address book. Mm-hmm. So it looks um, like a notepad. Yeah, that's right? the problem. The what if N is for notepad? They need to now <laughs> rename everything right. so they have unique yeah. first initials. Um, oh, I feel like you Office has that? bigger Ooh. problems than the names. But, <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> um, wow, yeah, you know, they do. It, sure. in hindsight, now that I've actually tried to recognize these, it, mm -hmm. it, yeah, no. I don't well, like them. So what you're not getting from this, A, is first of all, you're seeing it on a like a fake transparent background, right? So it's just kind of a white and gray thing. Um, what you're not seeing is what these look like uh, next to each other in the start menu yeah. or in the taskbar, what they look like next to the other sure icons. I'll see that you got to remember, on, like, and you can see this on my own taskbar. It's classic. Like modern uh, UWP apps like uh, Mail and Calendar have their own black and white 2D goofy look. Then there's something like the new Fire, File Explorer icon, which they've completely changed because they want it to look good with the new uh, light scheme. It is high contrast, rich colors, uh, very colorful. Um, Chrome and OneNote, uh, Photoshop, Skype are all kind of traditional, flat, not 3D icons. And then there's Notepad, which, by the way, is the icon from Windows Vista. The Notepad <laughs> icon has a glass surface on it because everything was glass back then, remember? It's it's also angled at, I don't know, 45 degrees, but let's say 15 degrees or 25 degrees, whatever it is. So it's it's kind of, it's looking over there. Mm -hmm. All the other icons are, are pointing forward. This one icon, Notepad, I'm sure there are a few others compared in the system. This is just what's on my on my taskbar, is from 2006. <laughs> like I, don't what, worry. This, you're going to do something bad to Notepad. I just know it. I feel yeah, it in well, my Well, fixing the icon would be a good thing, let me tell you. But it's it's just... <laughs> What I mean is this this kind of inconsistency, this we're going to implement new icons, but only in some places, you know, and we're going to put fluid design mm -hmm. system or fluid, whatever it's called in Windows in a haphazard fashion, a little bit in every version, you know, 
Uh, mm -hmm. Some interfaces will have these translucencies and these mouse over effects, and then some won't. Yeah. We're going to put a feedback thing in Notepad, but not in Paint. We're going to put a, <laughs> you know, like it, there, there's just a million of these little examples. The, uh, you know, the, note, the Notepad is the, my favorite. It's just the Windows Vista icon that I have to stare at every single day <laughs> with its beautiful greenish blue glass front like you've seen on so many notepads in your life <laughs> you know it's bizarre the day they change that icon though i'm gonna be lost i'm gonna be like where's notepad i, I don't have it installed where is it right i wonder <laughs> hmm. what if there's an alternate icon and hidden in there somewhere maybe they're look. gonna have they're gonna update the whole thing at some point yep. for sure right oh yeah yeah it's just taking time notepad source, you know open source yeah, who wants first they'll open source it like calculator and then they'll sure. they'll give it a special icon and then my yep. my glory days of notepad will be over. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we they'll have a new office style icon. Yeah. That could have its own color. Right. Its color will be off white. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I know people are really like it always floors me how much design things get people riled up. Because <laughs> like, I, I, like I always say, I don't really see design things that often. I mean, if I saw those icons, I would know I had them. But yeah, I don't think I'd give it a second thought. Really, be like, oh yeah, there's new icons, whatever. I don't care. See, I obsess over this. Yeah, I can it tell. It bothers me. You know, I see that. when I got the new icons, I was like, oh, that's that's cool. I got the new icons. I didn't know that was coming. And then I was like, how come it's only some of the icons? <laughs> Why is the icon smaller than the other icons in my taskbar? It's it's literally like 75% the size of the other icons. For some and it's reason. really bugging you now? Yeah, it doesn't look real. You know? I don't know. Okay. Can I change it? Maybe I can put it back. There's just different it. kinds of people in the world. That's all. That <laughs> some of them messed up like you. 20 some minutes like, agonizing on I know. Icons I'm like, wait, did show. we just talk about icons for 15 minutes? It's not minutes? even in the rundown as far as I can see. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> mm. This is important. You know what? It just means less time for Xbox later. So oh, think of, think of the bright side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wow, you know, I just Spotify has created a new website aimed at mm -hmm. Apple, uh, yeah. and Apple's, uh, you know, what is it, thirty mm. percent, as as Paul puts it, vig yes. on anything <laughs> st stolen, yep. uh, stolen. I mean, sold on the Apple uh, store. Yeah. The yep. uh, Spotify site is time to playfair dot com, and that's exactly oh what they. You know, they say Apple uh, is eliminating payment system choice and imposes a 30% fee on contest-based apps like Spotify right. and at the same time prohibits us from showing customers how to upgrade any other way. We deem mm -hmm. the 30% charges too expensive for our fans and our business. And Siri well, still they, won't they, launch a Spotify a really playlist. Yeah, no. They, they make a really good point. I think so. You know, Apple, yeah. you and think by the Apple's way, they're not alone. Apple Elizabeth Warren is making the same right. point, right? This is yeah. this is now getting into politics, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. So I'm sorry, I cut you off. What, what were you saying? I don't know. Just okay. Nonsense. It <laughs> um, so Microsoft says they're going to uh, do five uh, percent. Yeah. Good. Only consumer apps and only purchased a certain way. There's all these caveats to it. But still, this is what they said at Build last year, and now they're finally doing it. So yeah, it's good. Yep, it is good. And yeah. by the way, you know, this is the right behavior for someone who has one of the smaller app stores, right? Um, exactly. To kind of yeah. come into the market and just assume you can, you know, do the same as the big guys is, is yeah. uh, kind of a weird form of hubris. You know, it's kind of like Google trying to sell their unreliable phones for the same price as an iPhone. It's mm -hmm. like, guys, nobody know, even knows what your phones are. You got to, right. you know, they used to do it right, uh, usually did it right with the Nexus phones, which are often significantly yeah. less expensive than mm -hmm. the competition, but were better in many ways, you know. The Google phones are better in many ways, but I, I just don't think they have the brand value. So anyway, whatever, yeah. no one cares about Google phones. But the but the the Microsoft thing with the 5%, uh, this is just smart. It's it's yeah. it's right. It's the right yeah. It's the well, right thing for them. And also, they don't have the monopoly. My, Apple has in, in, enforces a monopoly on yeah. apps. Yeah. Yep. Um, right. I, they're going to, this is going to become heated, I think. 
Mm-hmm. Spotify, I do too. And Spotify I think they, sees the writing on the wall, I think. The European Commission is exactly the right antitrust body to go to with this because their whole purpose in life is to keep competition as healthy as possible. And they make a great case that that is not what's happening. However, Apple's plan. and I'm wondering what you think the solution is. I mean, <clears throat> by having a monopoly on the App Store on iOS, Apple ensures a certain amount of security, right? And... Um, yeah, but don't they all? Though? I mean, Microsoft yeah, does I, too. And listen, I, we're, we're getting you know. Yeah, but you can, you can buy other you can download other stuff on Android and and Windows. You oh, yeah, can't on true. an iPhone. You have to. Uh, the the problem is that Apple. This is a big. This is a problem all over the tech industry. Apple is competing with their own partners. Apple, in this case, has a music service that competes with Spotify. Yeah. That isn't beholden to these same right uh, drawbacks. You know, right. Spotify makes the case that we would essentially have to raise our prices by 30% so that we earned as much from each customer as Apple does. Well, in fact, they did. Remember, they raised it to 13 bucks, and then Apple comes mm. out with Apple Music at $10. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, blatantly just... anti-competitive. <laughs> right. So I think they're going to find a receptive audience in Europe. So European Union moves very quickly. I'm sure this will be resolved within a few weeks. But uh, they have a good case. I think it's smart. He's, he's being uh, sarcastic. Yes. <laughs> so I don't Is know he? if you've ever yeah. observed how yeah, slowly so. things move so. over there, but... Uh, they are an interesting combination of uh, very happy to go aggressively after U.S. tech giants, and uh, my God, do they move slowly? But <laughs> whatever, they they will absolutely find Apple guilty of this. And, and honestly, uh, Spotify's remedies, as they list at the end of that blog post, the three points that they made were are exactly right. This is this is what needs to happen. If every Amazon app on iOS, there's no store, which is confusing to normal people. Why can't I buy a Kindle book? In the Kindle app, <laughs> yeah. know, it doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> you know, Netflix well, it's just, just inconveniences out. people, even if they understand yeah. it. It's, it's like, well, it's I have to go stupid. to the browser to buy my Audible book or my Kindle book or my right, right. So, what was the, you might know, Leah? What was the estimated amount of money that Netflix was paying to <clears throat> Apple every year? Oh, it was billions uh, because of this. It was, it was hundreds say, of millions, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. it was yeah. a lot of money. Yeah, and this is like these guys are all eight hundred you know, million. Yeah, it was some crazy amount of money, and it's like, guys, this, we're just throwing. it. There's no reason for this. Eight hundred fifty-three million. It's crazy. A year, <laughs> crazy. And so Netflix stopped. Yeah, they're like, no, we're not doing this anymore. I mean, you do have you do, can do that, but if you're trying to sell a music uh, service on an iPhone, yeah. it's pretty tough to compete against it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So hmm. anyway, that's this will not stand, man. This will <laughs> not stand. Still uh, can't buy Corel Word Perfect in the store. Yeah, but we Microsoft, can now get Corelda for the Mac, so that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm waiting for Word Perfect to come back. I miss Word Perfect. <laughs> Word Perfect on the <laughs> Mac. Went away. Oh, you mean to the Mac? On the Word Perfect on the Mac was actually <laughs> yeah. the best word processor on the Mac. Is it really? I used wow. to use Word it's Perfect awesome. on the Amiga. <laughs> that I'm not going to vouch for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great, honestly. But. It was when Word at the time, Microsoft Word, which was the big competitor. Microsoft wasn't even using Apple's yeah. memory management. I mean, they just, they were going the, their Well, they ported way. their app. Uh, it was basically a Windows app running on the yeah, Mac. And it was funky. Or, it, was yeah. it was terrible. Yep. Uh, and Corel did such a good job with WordPerfect. I, I miss that on the Mac, but you probably don't care about that. I do care about that. Micro <laughs> Microsoft says, and I quote, it is now able to remove... This is a big deal. Steve Gibson spent some time on this yesterday. Oh, man. Faulty <laughs> yeah. Windows updates without user intervention. Yep. Okay. I'm going to rant on this one. Yeah. Yikes. Get the gong ball. Microsoft <laughs> throws a support article out there saying, hey, we're going to be able to um, remove updates, including drivers and uh, security fixes. We're not sure if it also includes feature updates. When somebody has a boot failure, we're, we can just do yeah. it and restore your machine to a configuration that should uh, work correctly. Yeah, last known and then configuration. It, right. And then we'll block the update for 30 days. Okay, mm -hmm. guys, there. where did this come from? <laughs> like, they just throw this out there. Oh, There's boy. no announcement. No one in the Insider program tested this, right? Oh, and that's, they told that's me right. today, they told mm. me today, it's going to be in 19H1. So Okay. <laughs> let me let me circle this back just because this is kind of, this is kind of a, an interesting coincidence here. Um, 
Leo earlier mentioned Windows Me, Windows Millennium Edition, right? right. Which is uh, one of the more reviled versions of Windows. But yes. what people <laughs> do forget about that version of Windows, that it actually was the first version of Windows that had many features that later became famous because they were also in Windows XP, right? But mm -hmm. they, a lot of right. these things debuted first in Windows Me. And one of them was um, driver rollback, right? Because mm -hmm. in Windows 9X, before that, if you installed a bad driver and your computer would not boot, well, you were right. dead in the water. That's right. That was the end yeah. of it, yeah. right? So one of the, Windows Me actually had a, the ability to roll back that drive, a bad driver and actually get back into the operating system. Now, it's not unattended or, you know, you had to do it yeah. yourself as the user, but you could do it. And, and let me tell you, that was a huge thing. And that happened, well, it was almost 20 years ago now. So yeah. what they, what they're just, what you're saying is they're adding a feature that will do this automatically. That the, I can't mm -hmm. believe they didn't use the word AI to describe how they're doing this. I know. That the system is automatically detecting that something went wrong with the driver you just installed through yeah. Windows Update, and it's going to roll it back automatically. It took them 20 years to add this feature to Windows, <laughs> almost. But it's a great, I'm not objecting to the feature. Oh, it's a great idea. But I'm objecting to the way they rolled this out because... Everybody who saw this support page was like, wait, it, when is this happening? There's nothing on the support nope. page that says this is a 19H1. It says it's happening already. <laughs> like it made it look like it's already going on. Uh, and So the theory here don't is Don't you worry your pretty little head about that. that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Guys. It'll just no, happen. No, enterprise I mean, I, users. Like, I, no, I, I understand what she's saying. Normally, Microsoft yeah. is so good at communicating <laughs> that this kind of sticks out. It's kind of a weird thing. No, um, everybody who has to deal with you know, doing anything around Windows Update and Windows Update services, they, when they saw this come down, they're like, wait, were they going to tell us they're doing this? Like, we have, like, policies well, in place in our organization to work around this so kind me, of stuff and to work with this stuff. Let me throw out a theory about how this is going to play in the real world because on this very computer I'm using, which is an HP computer, yeah. Yeah. I can get updates from Windows Update, and I also can get updates from HP through their HP support app. And uh, over the past couple of months, they've been fighting each other because there are two um, uh, drivers. One is for the graphics, integrated graphics, and one is for the, I think it's for the wireless adapter, Wi-Fi adapter. Um, they want to be on different versions, right? And so if I install the HP version, it's newer. And then I'll wake up in the morning and I'll go to turn on my computer by hitting the key and it never wakes up. But it's really running in the background, but it's not displaying anything. And I have to turn it off and turn it on like an idiot. Or I can install the Microsoft version, which is older, and it warns me when I install it. Are you sure you want to do this? Because this version is older than the one on your computer. But if you say yes, everything works fine. Except that the HP thing will pop up and say, hey, we have a new version of this uh, driver that you're running. And, you know, so it's like this constant cycle back of <laughs> yeah. back and forth, right? Yeah. So what I'm imagining for this new system is that Windows will roll back a bad driver automatically so you'll whether you notice that or not it's kind of hard to yeah. say but i guess you would notice it because you're rebooting the computer uh and then it, it, we said it would wait a month right and then it will just install it again it will fail again <laughs> like can you kind of imagine like this just happening over and over again yeah i have a worse scenario which yeah. is it rolls it back can't work reboots installs it reboots rolls it back reboots yeah no can you say boot no. loop you know what though? That computer is super secure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No one is breaking into that thing. Nope. Not even you. Not even no, me. I just feel like for the most minute new feature they add to a new Windows feature update, a, a new emoji, a yes. new this, a there's new that. A press there's release. like yeah. press releases, <laughs> there's, there's press blog release. posts, right. there's like there's a part there's videos. a Mardi Gras party in <laughs> Times Square. And then this. This is actually big and there's nothing. <laughs> It's funny yeah, you should say that because, yeah, Steve treated it that way, too. He thought, this is a huge story. It is. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I, they are bad at communicating, but this is kind of a new level of yeah. low bar. It may be that they just, <laughs> you know, you don't need to, I mean, I was being facetious, but really, you don't need to worry about it. We're just going to do it. Don't worry. It's okay. Yeah, you need to know. <laughs> just, if you're, you're IT well, administrator, you need to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fact that Windows is implementing some version of some emoji standard is something no one needs to know. <laughs> that that this very important, crucial piece of infrastructure has changed is honestly something I think we do need to know. Yeah. I know. It's hard. We have a hard time uh, focusing mm. on the superfluous. Sorry. I, We're not good at no. that. It's all right. <laughs> I'm getting a gong. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I like that she kind of went on a rant there, though. That yeah, was good. I don't she's even right, have a gun. though. She's right.
every day I'm sending emails to Microsoft. I'm like, hey, guys, remember this thing I brought up three days ago? Remember, remember this thing? How, how about it? <laughs> oh, boy. That, do, right, that doesn't right. surprise me. So Taro Elhonen said they've already, they just changed the page to acknowledge this is in 1903. That's good. That was no, nothing about where this was in up till 1903. Now. Okay. Yeah. So 1981. That's yeah. an improvement. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you. God, come on. We owe you. For that. <laughs> and for that, we thank you. And gong you. <laughs> and gong. I have a digital gong. Um, I hate to say it, but I think we probably should do this entire Xbox block. In yep. You should. Yep. And get it over with. Let Mary Jo. How many items we have? There's like eight items here. I can get through huge, this quick, I bet. Huge. But this is actually, there's some big news here. Uh, so first of all, Microsoft did its first public demo of X Project X Cloud, right? Which is this coming game streaming service. They streamed uh, one of the Forza games to, I think it was an iPhone or smartphone of some kind that was mounted onto an Xbox controller. Um, and then they issued a press, uh, not a, press, a blog post where they kind of said what you would expect them to say, right? Which is, you know, we don't expect this to take over for consoles and PC gaming. It's going to be complimentary. It's going to let you play where you want to play, but, but, you know, but of course they're going to say that, right? <laughs> like they have a business now that they can't destroy by saying this new thing is going to be everything, but this new thing is going to be everything. I think, I mean, um, not that consoles and, uh, gaming PCs go away completely, but. I think we're already in a place today where the vast majority of gaming that occurs is occurring on these mobile devices anyway. And I think this is going to bring high quality arcades, you know, or um, uh, 3D style professional games um, where they belong, you know, which is wherever people are. So I think it's kind of cool. I, a, a console in many ways is like a, um, like a desktop PC was, you know, a decade or so ago. I mean, naturally we moved to these devices that laptops, two and ones, whatever, where we can compute from anywhere. And I think that's gonna that's happening with gaming, and I think that's what this is uh, all about. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then there were a bunch of smaller announcements that occurred as part of the same uh, inside my, inside Xbox uh, broadcast that they did. There's a new version of their see-through controller, which is really white. It's not it's uh, really white. It's really it's white. <laughs> it's really transparent. It's kind of cool looking. It's seventy dollars. It's coming out in April. Not the elite controller everyone's looking for, but it does look really nice. And then um, two game-related things that are actually really huge. And when you hear them, you kind of wonder why this didn't happen before. Uh, one is that Minecraft is finally coming to Xbox Game Pass. And I think that happens in April as well. And it's one of those things where you hear that and you're like, right, why wouldn't that have been in my in Xbox Game Pass? You know, one of the deals with the Xbox Game Pass was all first-party games are going to be there. And anyway, now it will be. And then uh, perhaps even bigger, the Master Chief Collection, which is all the, the main Halo games, uh, had come out on Xbox One, actually right a couple of years ago at least. Uh, it is coming out finally on Windows. And so we haven't seen a, a top-tier Halo game on Windows since Halo 2 was released in the Windows Vista timeframe. So this is going back, what is that, 12, 13 years um, there, are, I don't remember the exact number of games, but it's, you know, Halo one through five plus, uh, Halo reach and some other games. It's, it, they're going to release it over time. Uh, it's not clear if you own master chief collection on Xbox, if you just get it for free on windows, you know, there's, there's not a lot of information yet, but they did confirm that they're remastering all the games, bringing them to windows. Um, it's a big deal. I don't know why this hasn't happened yet. Uh, it, Halo is their biggest gaming IP. Well, maybe Minecraft is now, but Halo is the one they've had forever. And they just don't seem to do a bunch of it, but a bunch with it. But now they are finally bringing it to Windows. So finally, um, I'm not going to go through all the games, but Microsoft ahead of this, uh, the GDC rather, announced 13 new ID at Xbox games. Just as a reminder, that's their independent game studio program. And so they have, I don't know, some of the 24 or 36 games they're going to be promoting at the show. But uh, they announced 13 new ones uh, just the other day. And then in kind of a goofy cross-platform note, um, and I don't know how this, I'm not really sure how they get away with this, but Epic's now by default, if you play Fortnite on Xbox or PlayStation 4, you will be teamed up against players on either console. So you'll actually be cross-platform gaming. Is that good or bad? It feels like that's bad. I don't know. Um, I don't know I don't either. my opinion. PS guys, PS guys are kind of... That's the problem. See, I think that's how Xbox guys think. <laughs> kind of shady. They don't want to you know? hang out I don't, with the PS guys. Yeah, we're there for a reason. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious about that. So I, that one's interesting. I, 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 Generally speaking, I would say I'm, I'm for this kind of thing, especially 
when it's a console. Once you move something to you know PC and Xbox, it gets into kind of a gray area. Yeah, yeah. But, that's because the controls are so different. Yeah, but I, I Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, yeah, we're I, just I talking would, about the PlayStation people are such weenies. I, <laughs> well, so <laughs> I mean, having played uh, the recent Call of Duty games on both consoles, I will say the experiences are nearly identical. It's the same yeah. sort of as long as the people same, camp in the same places, yeah. the same idiots. You know. I don't know. But it's mostly about the controls and, and latency. And, you know, you want to be p at parity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I mean, so I don't know how they're doing this. I, In fact, I thought Sony explicitly blocked this kind of thing. So hmm. anyway, they're, they've enabled it. I don't know what to say. Hmm. So I haven't tried it, but it's interesting. Um, it's uh, Wednesday, so we have another Xbox One sale. Um, this sale, which I don't, I don't remember how long it runs. It doesn't really matter. But if you buy any Xbox One or bundle, which means Xbox One S or Xbox One X, um, you can choose from a an unknown list of games and get a free game up to sixty dollars value. So, a lot of times, what we see on Xbox is you get fifty dollars off. So, depending on which game you get, this might actually work out in your favor. Um, but don't anyway. The general advice here always is don't ever buy an Xbox if it's not on sale. They're always on sale. You can wait a week; <laughs> it will be on sale. And then finally, uh, just in passing, I wanted to mention that um, Google next week is going to keynote at the GDC for the first time ever. They've attended the show. And, of course, Android is one of the biggest gaming platforms on Earth. But the fact that Google is keynoting and the fact that the uh, a game controller made by Google has leaked in patent form to the Internet suggests that they're going to announce something major, either a hardware device, which would be uh, unusual, or maybe a game streaming service of their own, which is what I expect them to do. So... Maybe this time next week we'll have some news about that. But the controller did leak. And by the way, speaking of Xbox versus PS or PlayStation, um, I'll actually I'll just show my controller here. If you look at the where these two little uh, thumbsticks are, you can see how they're oriented. On the PlayStation, this thumbstick is on the other side of the D-pad. It's closer. They're closer together. And that's what the Google one looks like. That immediately makes me hate it as an Xbox fan. <laughs> but um, I suppose it's something I could get used to. Google's got that streaming announcement. I think that's why Microsoft wanted to show the Forza. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And and I don't I don't mean to. This is a. I don't know if this makes sense to you, but I, I find that when Microsoft wants to show off performance and graphics at the same time, because oftentimes there's a trade off between the two, they always go with a Forza title. <laughs> and I there must be something about racing games that enables like high frame rates plus. Uh, high definition graphics and HDR, like you can do all of it at once, and it just kind of works. I have a theory. Yeah, what is, I'm dying to hear this because I I don't know why they do this all the time. I I bet you there's less CPU uh, involved in a racing game. You're you're not a, you're not on rails, but you're a little kind of sort of on rails, maybe. Yeah, like in other words, you're not. You're probably not. Yeah, like in a shooter, you could literally turn around, it's, take a left, go off into the woods. Calculate everything yeah. all around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm just so that's guess. the game they that is the game they streamed on the on the device and as soon as I saw that I have to say I did have a little bit of a negative oh, really reaction to it because it was clear to me that they were choosing the best case scenario oh yeah 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 you know for what it was going to look like and it looked you know it looked fine or whatever but we're streaming the uh, Google mm -hmm. uh, keynote on uh, Tuesday so what do you think GDC. they're going to announce what's your theory well, here I mean. Uh, the, I mean, no one knows, but the rumor is, well, first of all, it's Google at GDC, the Game Developers Conference. So it's going to be, and we know Google, yeah. like Microsoft, like Sony, like everybody else, is working on uh, streaming gaming. And Google's right. well positioned to do that. I mean, not only do they have Android, they have Chromecast, they have Cast devices. Well, but, so here's the, here's the question. They, they have released stuff in the past that suggests they're going to allow other, like, game-making companies they had Assassin, to use their infrastructure. They had Assassin's Creed on... Uh, yeah, on Chrome. But do you think Google will actually release? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So do you think they'll release their own service, like yes. for end users? So okay. I think the consensus opinion is there's two. One is almost certainly they have a service. I mean, that's what they were doing with Assassin's Creed. They were showing origins. They were showing how you could play it on a Chromebook through a streaming server on Chrome. So that's going to be a service, okay. and it's good for Google because they have a lot of low end hardware. When you say Assassin's Creed, uh, do you mean a real Assassin's Creed game yeah. or one of those side scroller things? Well, I don't remember because I, I never got into it. But uh, well, in other words, uh, Assassin's Creed's kind of a me, third person look. open world. No, type no, game. I know the difference. Um, Chrome Assassin's Creed. My sense was it was Origins, but I might be misunderstanding. No. Okay, that. I mean that's that's actually that's the full. 
That's pretty impressive. Uh, makes maybe. Assassin's Creed playable in Chrome. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's the full you know first person shooter. It was Odyssey. I'm sorry, which was the Greek uh, yeah. version of it. Okay. Uh, streaming at 1080p, 60 frames. So um, that's clearly a technology, probably a service that Google will start selling. And it's really in their interest because they have a lot of this hardware that could use it. Secondly, oh, yeah. there has been speculation they're going to do hardware. That's right. That's why I kind of mentioned that. I, I That seems like they literally, the news just came out today that they're scaling back yeah. on laptops. I'm not and sure tablets, I believe it. Right? Yeah. Um, Oh boy, I don't know. I don't think I don't believe that there's any real market for with a gaming smartphone, right? Right. Um, I do think there is a market for super high-end smartphones like a Galaxy S10 that this is, are this excellent the, for games. This is the Chrome version. Project yeah, Stream, they call it. 1080p streamed it. It was I say 60, 60 frames. frames. Yeah. I'm so cutting off the edge of the screen. Sorry. Um, um, yeah, I don't think they want to make hardware unless they make what they could make is something like a Chromecast, something cheap right? that is basically cast-enabled. Yep. Uh, yep. And, it, you know, it plugs into your internet, plugs into your TV, and now you've got a, this, this controller. So maybe you're using the phone as the power, and it's beaming to a good TV, like a good screen, a yeah. big screen, and right. then you have a controller. Right. Yeah. That would that, make sense. If, yeah. And, that you know, Chromecast is, what, 35 bucks. So I, I think it's much more likely something like that. But we're going to well, find out Tuesday at okay. 10 a.m. We're going we're gonna to stream it. So I, I blew through the Xbox stuff. But one of the comment, uh, comments I had made when I wrote about uh, xCloud was that, you know, in the Microsoft post, which, again, is very much like, guys, don't worry. We're not getting rid of consoles. It's, you know, people love to have, like, a 4K HDR display and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, guys, we have that. It's called a smartphone. Like, there are far more powerful smartphones out in the world than there are consoles stuck in a room with a with a screen like it, it is amazing what's possible on a mobile device now oh yeah what's I lacking mean, is <laughs> like you know good controller schemes and this, this s10 plus is a terabyte of storage i know 12 gigs it's, of ram uh, 855 which is as fast as a desk class right desktop class a better screen than anything i got at home Exactly. It's just small. Exactly. Yeah. Clip a, an Xbox uh, controller to that thing, and it's awesome. You know? It is. In fact, we had we had a device that is exactly that—a controller yeah. with a little mount, and you can right. play the game. And it's actually very—it's competes so well with is, the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. I expect that's what I expect from Google is uh, standardize what that means on Android. Yeah. And basically, any you know top tier phone is your. You know, it's the gaming device, but you need a controller. And, you know, there'll be like a standard way for that to work. And it should work with, if not every game, basically. It should work with every game. So, Mike, so what does that mean for Microsoft? Is that what I, I mean, it seems to me that's why Microsoft's showing off this. this. Uh, so, my, yeah. So, Microsoft wants uh, their service to work across all devices for the same reason, right? Because they've hit a wall with Xbox. Like the right. console itself, uh, they're number three <laughs> again. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's a it's a low margin, if not a loss, of a business, and they're just not getting a lot of traction there. You know, so they 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 can expand their services out so they get stuff on the PC, which makes tons of sense. But really, if they want the mass market, they have to go after smartphones and tablets. And the problem is, Google is one of the platform makers, right? So it's it's a lot like this uh, Android. You know, we're going to run Android apps by being them from the phone to your computer. Like that's what you have to do when you don't control the platform. You know, Google and Apple both have the ability to integrate this stuff deeply into the platforms, and they have in, in the form of we're going to run those apps natively, which is a better way to do it. And so Google, even though they have zero presence in games today, beyond the fact that Google Play, you know, sells games, um, they're a major threat to Microsoft yeah. in this future market for sure. You're right. This is a hideous controller. But this, <laughs> yeah. this is from the patent. This is a patent. You see what they did with the thumbsticks? It's yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. But on the other hand, uh, maybe this is part of a larger device that includes your phone. I don't know. We'll yeah. find out. It's, yeah, I, we'll see. We'll see. It's a good time to be a gamer. Sorry, Mary Jo. You know, says Leo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a great Call of Duty time. Stories. It's a great time to be a it was gamer. It's a great, by the way, great Onion headline that says, uh, man has now spent, and it's a picture of a guy playing a video game, he says, man has now spent more time fighting Nazis than his grandfather did 60 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> you know, something like that. I think you're well over that threshold, Paul. <laughs> you're well way over it. Yeah. Paul's war has lasted 12 years. 
Yeah, of course, yeah. I got to fight the Nazi zombies. Yeah, is, mm, so. yeah, and you won. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, p- totally parenthetically, we've been watching Peter Jackson's um, movie about World War One. Oh, Have I want to see that. that. It's for rent now. No, I've seen the okay. scenes from it. I need. I oh, want to see them. Oh my god. So uh, Jackson, of course, the creator of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, uh, and, a, and a really horrible movie called Mortal Engines. I don't. It seems like, like he just lost his way somewhere, but has also been working on restoring World War One footage. Right. And uh, yeah, they've added audio. They've had lip readers. Li- read yeah. The lips. And, and, they, and then they, they got people from those regions, or from those places, so they sounded like those guys. Like, it's amazing. Wow, that's cool. It's so uh, I, I, they I shall not grow to... old, and you can you can get it now on your. Uh, oh, is it actually available now? Yeah, you have to buy it, uh, but you can rent that's it. That's fine. Of weeks. I'm gonna buy it. I want to see. It's this twenty song. bucks. I bought it because it's. But I'll tell you what. I thought it was like theatrical. You're thing. gonna you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna say wow. Uh, it's not at all like oh, Call no. of Duty. <laughs> well, okay, but so the thing I have seen is like when I use the elliptical, I watch, you know, Netflix on a TV or whatever. And I, I went through the, I think it's like World War II in color or whatever. Yeah, which, yeah, that's you know, good. That's 10, really good. 15 yeah. years ago yeah. was basically the same thing. But when you look at the quality of it, it's like a, you know, it's black and white footage that has like watercolor paint on right. it. I mean, it looks terrible. And when you see the thing that Peter Jackson did, it's hard not to look at something like World War II in color and think, could we uh, could we do that to this too? Because you know that footage is out there, and and uh, he could spent, be made. He spent a much, long much. time doing this. This is a lot of work, mm. frame yeah. by frame by frame. Sure. Uh, but if you uh, want, I mean, forget all quiet on the Western Front. If you want a movie, <laughs> an anti-war movie, holy cow! Mm. I mean, it so wait, is, what is it called again? They shall not grow old. And where did you buy this? Uh, I got it on iTunes, but I'm sure that means okay, it's available so everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And we made the kid watch it. I didn't realize it was available mm. yet. Yeah. <sighs> well, and just a word of warning, it's like The Wizard of Oz. It starts off with the old footage. All yeah. through and training, it goes, it's yeah, the yeah, old yeah, footage. Yeah. Then when they yep. get to the war, it becomes the new restored footage. And it's yeah. wh- all of a sudden, you go from 4-3 mm-hmm. black and white shaky cams to 16-9 sure. color. You're mm-hmm. there. It is extremely graphic. Oh, I'm all, I am all over this. I didn't realize it was available on video. Unbelievable, yet. unbelievable. It w- it will uh, turn your change your tune. Uh, let's talk about uh, Microsoft. They're going to battle against Foxconn. Wow. Yep. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wanted to put this story in because Paul's always talking about you know too much open source love and every it's just getting too good over there. Well. It's never going to be that good because back in 2013, Microsoft signed. Remember when they were signing all those patent agreements with Android and Linux and Chrome OS mm-hmm. vendors? They, yeah. they were basically threatening them without saying it publicly. I, know, I miss that, those hey, days. Exactly. Remember those days? Um, hey, you know what? You've, you've got some software that might infringe on some of our patents. Wouldn't it be terrible if something happened to your users? <laughs> <laughs> be terrible if uh, Vinny took you up back and something happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's- so <laughs> now... Foxconn oh, God, is saying, why do we owe Microsoft any money? We never paid them any patent monies. So if they didn't, they owe them a lot of money dating back to 2013 when they signed this, when Han Hai, their pat, parent company, signed the patent agreement with Microsoft. <laughs> um, and Microsoft saying they want to go through their books and they want to go after mm-hmm. them for the back money owed. And Foxconn is just saying, hey, we don't believe manufacturers should have to pay software royalties. What royalties for what? For Windows? No, for well, yeah, indirectly because back in those days when Microsoft was signing all these patent agreements, they were saying Android and Linux and Chrome OS oh. infringed on Microsoft patents, and they got oh. the companies to sign right. patent licensing agreements, which always, almost always, included royalty payments. There were very few that did not. So this right. ought to be interesting how this shakes out now because they're pretending they don't owe them anything and. Microsoft has a signed contract. And the best part of the story is that that guy that you mentioned, the guy who runs yeah. Foxconn, is yeah. insane. He is. <laughs> There's an awesome video of this guy. It's basically like the um, uh, Khrushchev banging his shoe on the table thing. It's yeah. exactly like that. It's awesome. No, he's he's not going to back down. He's not going to just be like, yep. okay, we'll give them their money. No, it's not going to be that. I mean, maybe they will have to give them their money once the lawyers are done. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. So don't oh, worry, guys. They're, they're not totally a kinder and gentler Microsoft. When it comes to royalty payments for patents, they're still out there getting their money. 
Yeah, baby. That's what I like to say. Paul's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, wow. Wow. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, that uh, is going to be interesting. And I, I, do they sue them in China or do they sue them here and make them? California. California. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Well, let's see. There you go. I call it the Chinese Republic of California. <laughs> <laughs> and mighty proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. And then we just have a really fast Surface um, yeah, item because yeah. uh, Microsoft's adding two new models of Surface to their lineup starting in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, they're both uh, – one is the Surface Pro 6, um, one is the Surface Laptop 2, and they both are going to have Core i5 models with 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage which don't exist, I guess, in those lineups right now. We don't know what the price is going to be, but it should be um, available in the U.S. and Canada later this month. So we should know soon. Cool. Yeah. Folks, we're going to take a break and come back with the back of the book tips, picks, and beer just around the corner. But first a word from our sponsor, Atlassian for IT. A lot of developers know the name Atlassian. Of course, Jira is the king of agile development. But, you know, Atlassian is a collaboration software that empowers IT teams around the world as well. Because IT is, IT is right at the center of this revolution, this cloud-based revolution. IT is the, the front lines. They're the guys in the trenches that have to plan and execute, and they got to do it fast, and they got to do it right. Everything's much more complex than it used to be. Incidents often require more than just, you know, some guy goes and fixes it. You, you've got to be, you know, agile. You've got to have smart coordination between operations and software development teams. It is a, it's a team sport. And as you know, in team sports, communication is everything. And with IT sitting at the middle of this, you know, the, the stakes are high. you got to get it done. you got to get it done right. And you got to get it done fast. And everybody's got to be in on the fix. Falling short inside of business critical workflows is just not an option. It's why so many teams, including ours, by the way, have turned to Atlassian. Of course, we all know Jira, but Atlassian is the company whose software tools are designed to manage complex collaboration and not just for programmers anymore. Atlassian offers an affordable, reliable suite of tools for teams of any kind and all sizes, from DevOps to Agile to IT apps, to ops, to ICSM, and, and whatever's next. So I want you to kind of think of Atlassian as your, as your backstop, as your assistant there, and getting the job done right the first time and keeping everybody up to date. Atlassian provides all the tools to help modern IT organizations plan, service, and support the change that's happening right now and is propelling business. So we got Jira. Uh, Confluence, which is great. We use Confluence. So we use Jira to keep track of incidents, who's working on them, the current stage that they're in, and that great satisfying feeling when you slide it to the completion column. Uh, but we document everything as we go in Confluence, and that's great because you don't have to leave one tool to use the other. If you have a code-based bit bucket, it adds to that, you know, complete set of tools. They're really the backbone of effective cross-team project planning, organization, and communication. But there's other things you got to keep track of. And Atlassian's got tools for that. Ops Genie and Status Page helps you detect incidents better, coordinate response efforts, resolving issues faster, and again, keeping customers and stakeholders up to date. It's so important. We use Atlassian. You should use Atlassian. You can choose the tool that's right for your current framework and trust that as you grow, Atlassian's tools will grow with you. It all integrates seamlessly. Jira, Confluence, everything's there. Your team doesn't have to bounce from platform to platform. And like all of Atlassian's products, the tools for your IT team are easy and free to try. You got to look at them. You got to consider them because it's going to solve a lot of problems. You don't need more problems when you're solving the big problems. You need Atlassian. Go to Atlassian.com slash IT. Don't let your tools get in the way. Let them support you. Find out which Atlassian tools are right for your IT team. Atlassian. Try Atlassian today to see what IT can be. That's Atlassian.com slash IT. We kick things off at the back of the book with Mr. Paul Thorat's tip of the week. 
the previous free release of the original Crackdown on Xbox One via backwards compatibility. Backward compatibility, sorry. Uh, Crackdown 2 is also now available for free on Xbox One. Um, so a lot of numbers in I, there. So Xbox One, but it's Crackdown 2. <laughs> right. So Crackdown 2 was originally an Xbox 360 game. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's available now for free. Is it 360 you should, you should, still, or is it officially fully Xbox One? It's a backward compatible game, mm -hmm. so it's still the 360 game, but it's running now. You know, I own, I'm prejudiced. I shouldn't be. I avoid mm -hmm. those, but they look good, right? I mean, they've updated the graphics. Oh, yeah, and everything. yeah, yeah. They, yep. Uh, and I, I actually, I don't believe I've ever played Crackdown 2. Crackdown 1 is one of those games I actually finished. Like, it's an yeah, excellent you game. You never forget, yeah. It's like... Yeah, uh, Crackdown 2, I don't... Yeah. yeah, I didn't try it. I didn't, I didn't. Oh, anyway, it's it. free. We should so. get it. And it's free. <laughs> yep. Yeah, try it. It's free. You should get it. And then I just, I think this came up earlier today on the podcast somehow, but Spotify premium users can now get a free and ad-supported version of Hulu for free with their subscription. It's I'm sure the, that's not going to cost. It's the ad version, not the... The ad supported version. Right. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's no way to kind of upgrade it, which is goofy. Um, but still, that's a deal because it doesn't, isn't the basic version of Hulu like 10 bucks? I mean, it's. Yeah. I think it might be six or eight bucks. Okay. I don't remember exactly, but it's. Uh, but I no, pay it's for still the it's ad still free a, version. Yeah, it's a great but, deal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, You're going to see a lot of this as Apple readies yeah. whatever it's getting yep. ready for uh, next. I think that's exactly weeks. what the timing yeah. was all about. Yeah. yeah. You know, remember last year, Apple or uh, Spotify did a deal where you, if you were a premium customer, you could get a free Google Home Mini. And then in their next quarterly earnings, they noted that they took some huge hit because oh, all geez. these people took it got bad. it. So I can yeah. only imagine this is going to have the same impact yeah. on them. But that's one of the other costs of doing business, right. you know, when you're uh, competing against Apple. So you got to do what you got to do. Got to get so. the customers. Yeah. If it's you're a Spotify confusing, premium. though, because like T I get free stuff because of T-Mobile. I get, and then, like, I have a Netflix, but I get free Netflix, and I don't, yeah, I just, I, I yeah. think, I bet you a lot of people just go, fine, whatever, I, you know, I already got one. <laughs> I pay for the most expensive Netflix because my yeah. kids use it in different locations, yep, and, you too. know, we have 4K TVs, and blah, blah, blah. And the but, most expensive Hulu, too, so I don't, I wouldn't bet. Yeah, it is, yep, yep. We just started doing HBO now, so we can catch up on Game of Thrones, mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. watch True Detective, mm -hmm. but I'm looking forward to canceling Ooh. that in May, or whatever. The new season of True Detective is the best of the three. Yeah, that's going to be the really first thing we watch. Really good. And Crashing turns out to be better than I thought. It wasn't so great in the first couple of seasons. Oh, it interesting. Got, it got I actually, I have to say, so just looking through the app last night, I was Barry, like, honestly, there's a bunch of stuff on here Barry that I'm going to want to watch. That's coming back. Yeah. Veep last season, that's coming yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yep. I love Veep. Chris, yeah, we, know, we're caught up on Veep. Some people think of this as spring. I think of it as HBO time. <laughs> it's, not, it's not spring fashion season. No. It's a spring new show season. Winter is coming. Yeah. <laughs> Remember in the old days, there, were, there was no new TV in the summer, and now that's completely yeah, different. Yeah, it's completely flipped. Yeah. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, a couple <laughs> of app picks. Um, uh, the uh, Chrome has been updated to version 73. Uh, if you're on a Mac, you'll get dark mode and PWA support, which is awesome. Uh, but if you're on Windows, this is kind of interesting. You get uh, DuckDuckGo support in 60 markets. Now... Apparently, Google did a rejiggering of how this works, but I guess they look at the top five search engines, and so they hadn't done it in a long time. And when they did, they realized DuckDuckGo is actually in the top five. So now you can add DuckDuckGo as your default search engine in Chrome. You could do it before, but you had to install a, a, a plugin, right? So now you can just add it right from the browser. There's no uh, or extension or whatever. There's no extension required. So that's kind of cool. And... Um, Corel Draw Graphics Suite 2019. I don't know why that came up earlier, but it did. But yes, it is here, and it's on the Mac now. Um, in like full featured native app form, it's not like a port from Windows or anything. That's kind of interesting. Um, there's also a web app called Corel Draw dot app, uh, which you get for free if you buy into the suite and so forth. And I give give Corel some credit because they offer this in two different ways. You can buy it in perpetual form, like Microsoft offers with Office 2019, or you can buy it in a subscription form, and then you get the you know, the next version, obviously, if your subscription is ongoing. Uh, but they don't they don't make the on-prem version of the perpetual version, like, worse. Like, it's the same thing. And so the way it basically works out is the full cost of the suite, if you subscribe over three or four years or whatever, you'll basically pay the same amount, but you'll benefit from just getting the new versions. And so I think it's it's kind of a fair way of doing it. And then if you will allow it, this is sort of a reverse pick, if you will, <laughs> which means I'm looking for help, which is that I've been using uh, Pocket Cast. I mentioned last week that they upgraded to version 7. It's driving me insane. 
And I have been binging a podcast that is one of those things where you kind of cherry pick the episodes you want to watch so you don't or listen to rather. So you don't have to listen to it like one, two, three, four, five. And the way they've changed the interface now, it makes it impossible for me to tell. I have to go into every episode to see if I've listened to it now. And it's making me crazy. And I listen to podcasts every single day. I've been using this app for years. So I'm just curious uh, if you guys listen, if you have a, like a recommendation for a podcast app, I've looked at a bunch of different things. Cross platform is preferable. I think pocket cast is really the king of the hill. Yeah. still. Mm-hmm. are they, I don't, I don't like that new interface, but, uh, yeah. it's still, um, you know, w- one of the advantages it has. And for somebody like you, I think this is real is that with an account, it remembers yeah. your podcast from on different platforms and different phones. Yeah, yeah. So if you right. Um, so by the way, one of the other issues I just experienced this driving back to Bo- when I went to Boston a couple of weeks ago, it doesn't always do that. <laughs> so oh. mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. It, it it one of the nice things is if you listen on one phone or whatever and go to a different device or go to the web, whatever, it catches it up, right? So you you're always yeah. in the right place. But also it remembers um, your subscriptions, which is handy. Yes. No, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. I just I right. Feel like There's I've no into perfect. Yeah, no, yeah. No, and you don't do video. Stitcher, you just I don't do audio. Like it. Yeah, uh, and you've yeah, done Overcast. Uh, I guess that's yeah. I did. Only, I looked so. at Spotify. I looked at Google Play Music. I looked at Google Podcasts. Google's, Google's getting the podcast is getting features. It was so feature light at first. I wouldn't recommend it. But on Android, it's one just, cool thing you can do is you can make an icon for any show you listen to. Yeah, that's kind of they handy. don't have they don't have automatic downloading, which is the most basic oh, podcast feature of all time. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's crazy. That's I, they, what a podcast sure, is. Right. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to add it. They have um, cleanup uh, options. Like if I've listened to it, get rid of it in three days. Or if I've not listened to an episode for 90 days or whatever, get rid of it. They have that kind of stuff. But yeah, they Pocket don't have Cast does that perfectly. I think, I yeah, mean, yeah. I agree Pocket Cast has under, you know, now that they're uh, owned by public radio, I think they've gotten a little worse. The new UI is a little disappointing. But... It's right. still got more, it's more features than anybody, yeah. I think. I just feel like they've, that might be part of the problem. Like I kind of just have these basic needs. Yeah. And I think there's too much it's stuff too going fancy. on and it's a little convoluted yeah, no, to I find agree. things like, I want to see the list of um, the most recently downloaded episodes of whatever, po- of all podcasts, you know, yeah. it's there, but it's under filters and then you have, you know, it's, it's, it seems like everything's an extra step. I guess I, I use it just kind of naively by just going from show to show to show <laughs> but right. yeah i i agree it's gotten they've overdone it i don't know you know i don't know i wish there were a, that's something we need as podcasters i know yeah. i'll keep looking yeah. <laughs> I don't know. um i guess that wraps it up so we should move to uh mary joe foley and yes the enterprise pick of the week the enterprise pick of the week is System Center 2019, which I haven't made. I, haven't, I don't think I've ever made System Center a pick. It's way overdue, especially because there's news this week. First, if you've been wondering, where is System Center 2019? Say that every it is morning. coming this month nice. to a volume licensing center near you. Secondly, if you're wondering, is Microsoft going to keep doing these twice monthly feature or even more frequent feature updates to System Center? These things called semi-annual channel releases? The answer is no. So Microsoft's doing away with SAC for System Center, saying that users didn't really want it. They said they they preferred the long-term servicing channel because it update cycles were longer and more stable. What does that sound like? Windows, doesn't it? Except in Windows, they're going to keep going with the SAC twice monthly feature updates for for client and server, as far as we know. But System Center is no longer going to have this. It's going to be just long-term servicing center releases, which I think will be about every three years. The uh, in between those three year periods, they're going to do updates, like a, a update roll up kind of thing and add that to the long term servicing center branch, um, which seems to make a lot of sense. And the But the one product in the system center family that is going to continue to be updated actually three times a year is configuration manager. So if you use configuration manager, you're still going to have these regular frequent updates. But if you're using any of the other parts, you're only going to have to deal with these big 
basically once every three year updates. So that's the enterprise pick. Mm -hmm. How about a developer pick? You haven't done that developer pick ever. I think we've done once maybe. Um, and Leo probably knows about D-Trace. Do you? Oh, you give me more credit than I deserve. No. Okay. I mean, I know what it is, but I've never used yeah. it. So D-Trace is a very popular open source Unix tool for debugging and diagnostic tracing. Support for it is coming to Windows 10. That's pretty with cool. The, yeah, with the 19H1 release. Yeah. So this is something that a lot of people use. Um, it's a, it actually was built originally for Solaris. And Microsoft talked about this coming at Ignite last year, but now the instructions, the binaries, and the source code are all available. Um, and it, what Dtrace does is it lets you look into a system and see things like kernel function calls, um, properties of running processes, probe drivers, you know, the things you want to do as a, as a diagnostician. Is that a word? Uh, anyway, that's the pick. It's coming in 19H1, which should be out, uh, start rolling out to the mainstream around April this year. Nice. Oh, man, I need a beer. <laughs> Fortunately. I have a perfect pick for today, yes. I have to say. I've outdone myself on this pick. Wow. Sunday is St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Sunday is St. Sunday Patrick's is Day. St. Patrick's Day. And we don't drink so, green beer. In fact, I think, as I remember, no. you stay home. Yes. You don't want to go outside. Amateur it's hour. amateur no. hour yep. on St. Patrick's yep. Day. Um, but if you are going to drink beer on St. Patrick's Day, and who isn't, you would probably <laughs> like a dry Irish stout. Luckily, you don't only have to go with Guinness. There are a lot of other options these days. And Two Roads Brewing from Connecticut has an excellent stout that's available on Nitro Pour in many places. And it has a great beer name. It's called the Irish Exit. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm not mean? sure if everybody knows what that is. I don't. I feel if like you're I've from New that. England, like you know. It's a tax know. strategy. <laughs> no. no. If you're from New England, you know. So if somebody makes an Irish exit, it means they leave somewhere without saying bye to the people who they're with. Oh, I do that every time. Is that, there's a name I do for too. that? Yeah. Yes. So, I call you know, that the classic Thorat chew and screw. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you don't need, you don't want to take like the extra half hour to say bye to everyone. So you yeah. kind of exit out the side door and, and everybody said, where'd you go? I made an Irish exit. Oh. Like is, is that frowned upon? Uh, is that frowned upon? <laughs> some people frown uh. upon it. In my family, it's kind of standard behavior. But <laughs> I always, you know, I always want to say goodbye to the host and the host is thank yeah. you for a lovely time. No, I'm uh, kind of famous for just taking off and people are like, wow, where'd you go? Oh, it makes left. tons of sense because eventually someone's going to start crying and you just want to get yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Irish yeah. Exit. So it's called Two Roads Irish Exit. Um, it's a dry Irish stout, low ABV. You can drink a lot of them. And so you mentioned nitro pour and I'm seeing that more and more. Yeah. Uh, Have you ever had that like for a coffee? Yeah. You can get Starbucks yeah. So what is, what is it? They, do, they don't use oxygen. They're not using air. They're using. How do they do it? An inert Are they gas. like forcing? Yeah, they're like forcing it to to. Uh, well, you, it's got coffee or beer. Yeah. Right? What is the advantage? It doesn't oxidize. Um, I think there's no oxygen. I don't know what so the advantage oxidize. is. To, to me, it tastes uh, much more creamy. Yes. And smooth. On, in beer, right? the head becomes very fine. <laughs> yeah. With the nitro yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly how they do it technically. I, I could look that up, but... Um, well, they gas I, it up I with nitrogen know. instead of air, I guess. Yeah. Oh, right. here, nitrogen bubbles are smaller than CO2 oh, bubbles, meaning the beers feel don't feel as carbonated yes. when they're on nitro pour. Yep. Yes. I, I should have known that. But um, yeah, so if you ever have a stout on nitro pour, it's so smooth. It's almost like you're drinking oh, okay. like hot chocolate. So normally <laughs> they use carbon dioxide to, to uh, yeah. fizz This yeah. is nitrogen instead. Actually... It's still got CO two, but it's a little bit of a little more nitrogen. Less or something. Seventy thirty, yeah. Seventy yeah. percent um, nitrogen. Hmm. But yeah, hmm. nitrogen is mostly insoluble in liquid, which is why you don't end up with a lot of prickly bubbles in nitro beer. Uh huh. You get a gas that buoys up the creamy head. <laughs> How many times have I said that? Uh, <laughs> there's smaller bubbles. Um, okay. On the other yeah. hand, you don't get the uh, aromatics pushed up true. into the glass that CO2 does. So yeah. It's worth it, though. It's really, really nice and smooth and easy to drink. Yeah. 
it's good. Okay. It's good stuff. I'm glad to. Uh, By the way, the uh, Android Q beta is out. <gasps> we knew it was coming. I brought my <laughs> Pixel 3 just in case. Mm -hmm. Well, you can start getting that thing ready. So exciting. <laughs> just got this thing working finally. Okay. Well, let's break it again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if it breaks, we got it right here mm -hmm. on Windows Weekly. <laughs> The place to come if you want to know what's going on with Microsoft. Partly, mostly, entirely because of these two right here. Our rogues <laughs> gallery of Microsoft experts. Paul Therott from Therott.com and his book publisher, LeanPub.com, where you can get his latest, The Fireside Guide to Windows yep. Paint. <laughs> no. Close enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's escaping me. The Field Guide to Windows field. 10. Windows 10 Field yes. Guide, yes. Yeah. Although the, those fireside guides are great too, I think that's not a bad name. Yeah, it actually, would be a good name, wouldn't it? Because it is kind of you know some some things are like a fire, a dumpster fire. But I'm gonna do the fireside guide to Twitter. That'd be good. There are definitely parts of Windows 10 that belong in a dumpster yeah. fire for yeah. sure. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley's at ZDNet, where her blog, all about Microsoft.com, is really a must read for anybody following the ways and means of Wedmond. And each Wednesday, we gather together around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Now at our uh, new summertime, so that means it's uh, 1800 UTC. If you stop mm -hmm. by, if you want to watch at twit.tv slash live, actually watch or listen. We've got streams of audio and video. Uh, you can, If you're doing that, join us in the chat room, irc.twit.tv, with everybody else who's uh, watching live, pretty much. Uh, On-demand versions available in your favorite podcast application or at our website, twit.tv slash www. Also on YouTube. Everywhere. But uh, it's a good idea to subscribe. That way you'll have every episode the minute it is available. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. We'll see you next week on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. <laughs>